Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 18 of the Smobcast. We got a somewhat imbibing plushie here with us today. and Just one beer in, though. Mm-hmm. That, that's the sound I'm of... The whole... I'm not that quick. I can't drink that fast. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, well, you gotta start somewhere, I guess. Um... <laughs> And today we're going to be talking about team building, uh, just like how we build a team in in FGO, uh, just talking over like some of the basic roles and uh, what you would use for certain types of battles and to deal with whatever types of gimmicks. Uh, uh, we'll walk through that. And I think I think that could be a bit interesting from like the two of us, because we both play the game very differently. So his approach to certain things might be different from the way I approach them. Uh, so I think we'll have some good wide coverage between the two of us. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, so. So, I mean, we're just talking about team building. I think there's like two main categories of like what you do when you build a team, right? So you build a team for farming or you build a team for challenge quests. Um, farming is relatively straightforward until you start, you know, going into multi-core territory. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I think there, there's two main approaches can go with that. Obviously, there's more, uh, especially in the challenge quest part. Yeah, it's kind of unfortunate how, like, most people don't care that much about it, but I that is the most interesting like you know team building uh because you have to play around gimmicks and stuff so it, it's not just trying to get more damage trying to make charge um yeah. you know well there are two basic roles there's dps and there's support uh let's do s spt Oh, I need to turn down the smoothing. This is... Holy shit, it is... What is going on here? <laughs> what is taking up all of this... Bandwidth... Not bandwidth. You build for bond farming, you have to settle for 9 turn runs. Just 120... Someone. Then you, you can do it in 3 turns. Easy. So... When you're picking a DPS... Uh, so... It, there's two basic types. There's single target. There's AOE. Uh, it so usually in a in a challenge quest where there's more than one enemy, you'll pick AOE. Uh, vice versa, uh, when there's only one target. Uh, but sometimes you'll want to do one or the other. Like if you don't have a good single target, you might do a higher investment AOE that you have, uh, or Maybe the damage checks are too high for your AoE on an AoE quest and you just pick a single target uh, that will help you uh, punch through those damage checks. So DPS is a little more straightforward there. Uh, there are some uh, like subgroups, like the way that they do damage can vary. Uh, but it usually either comes down to they do NP damage or they do crit damage. Yeah. So uh, there's a few different ways you can go about things. Now, crit is not exactly... Reliable. Yeah, it's not the same as these because there are AoE and single targets that crit. Uh, and crit can kind of stand in for single target, but not quite for AoE. Uh, yeah. Which is uh, why I prefer AoE being able to crit. <laughs> yeah, that kind of covers both fronts, yeah. Um, there's how it works. Yeah. And, um... Just want to get the DPS part out of the way, because that's this is the probably the most simple part. Because for the most part... Uh, you're going to want to build, you're going to want to know about the selections here to support whatever DPS you're using. Because in basically, in almost every situation, you can make uh, 
a certain just whatever DPS work if you have the right support. Yeah, um, I mean, there's also weirder DPSs that has has like no non-damaging MPs. Um, yeah, that also doesn't support. I think it's actually quite rare. I would genuinely say the only um, example is Super Ryan. I think every other like you know like DPS quote unquote crit that doesn't do that doesn't have like um any sort of damaging MP, they usually do some form of support. Like even characters like Qin Shi Huang, you can arguably <laughs> With say Saber he... Shield. Oh well Saber Shield yeah, and he's um, got like twelve percent team MP damage. <laughs> and um uh Caligula, I guess. Like th like these characters are just like selfish um yeah, Inshin is uh, is also completely oh, yeah. self In stuff. Like I mean, I guess uh, he's also, got a defense debuff and NPC, but that's not much. The Chinese one. Uh, Qin Liang Yu. Oh yeah, Qin Liang Yu. I should. Yeah, her. Yeah, she's I... she's weird, uh, and that's uh, that's something we'll uh, talk about later on. There, it's this is not quite just one line here in between them. There's yeah. also. Uh, this third role, which is kind of in between the two, which is uh, yeah. either you can call it sub DPS, you can call it multi core DPS. There's, uh, it's just something that it's a, it's usually a DPS that that is capable of doing support for the team while also doing damage, uh, but yeah. generally they're not. Generally, you won't have that one heavily relied on for damage, but uh, but like good multi-core DPS that uh, that can make up for inability to uh, loop more often or just having bad card RNG, which is something that a lot of crit servants can struggle with. Yeah. So that's uh, that's how this role works, uh, and then support is there's like a lot of a lot a lot of different things here but uh generally with the support uh you you'll have like offensive focus you also have defensive focus uh so offensive uh that can either be just buffing uh it can I mean you know what? I'm gonna yeah, have to I, I, do this differently. I mean, I like like the, the thing with supports, right? Is that in terms of uh, a character's power level, they usually scale with rarity, right? Yeah. So, so with DPSs, it's it's very simple to like know what scaling with rarity mean. Um, ba basically, you know, it it does better DPS. It has more damage. It has more anti gimmicks, maybe on them. It has more whatever. Um, but for supports, I feel like a lot of the time, in terms of their power scaling, they're scaling how many how many roles they can fit. So like if you look at all the SS like bunch of SSR top tier supports, like both the Merlins, like Castoria, they they're fulfilling like multiple roles at, at once, uh, and that's their power scaling because now I, it's like a two in one, it's, it's like a three in one, so. Yeah, I and mean, then you got I, Bango I think, that fits everything here, basically. Yeah, it certainly muddies the water a little bit uh, in terms of how they scale support. Because, like, for DPS, they usually just scale numbers. But, like, honestly, if you look at a lot of low star supports, they still have, like, 50% card effect and stuff. Some sort of, like, at least 30%. Like, it's not low. Not, like, the difference between a low star support's numbers and, and, and an SSR is not as big as the low star's DPS's damage output compared to a like at five star dps's damage output so i genuinely think how how they actually scale these things is they scale how much rolls they fit which is i think it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting way to see it mm. uh, constantine constantine is definitely a mix between dps and support um it kind of just depends on how you play him uh, a lot of people get really disappointed in him though because they try to uh completely relegate him to the support role when he's supposed to be support and do damage uh it's more so he he's a crit dps that uh can also do some team support on top of it i think this is a weird like 
thing to say. I'm not sure if anyone agrees with me, but I think the most comparable character to Constantine in SSR in terms of what they do is Kim Chi Huang. Uh, uh-huh. I know it's very weird. Like he doesn't solo as well, but like in terms of in the team, they, it's like hyper defensive, but like they also kind of do offense um, and they like, you know, redirect attacks. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, guess that's yeah, I see what you mean. Uh, yeah. Sort of like wanting to self buff and having more self crit stuff, but the NP also is just a turn of safety for the rest of the team. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that, Constantine that makes sense. is. I disagree with being SSR Bodica. Unironically, after the command code, I think Bodica is a better buffer than Constantine. Yeah, but she but if you're using team. yeah, but to be fair, if you're using Constantine for buffing, you, you're doing it wrong. Yeah, yeah, like but Bodica is Bodica post buff has slowly became one of the most offensive, not post buff, post buff and post Roman command code. Obviously, it's more RNG, but like that, she became one of the most offensive like supports you can get for generic, um, like. 60% universal P mod, 50% crit up for your entire party, both for three turns. E- even if you ignore the arts up on her third skill, it's kind of stupid. So, yeah. Anyways, sorry, you continue. Yeah. Um. So yeah, like what I was, uh, what I was talking with, uh, like about offensive support. Like the two categories I was going to separate them into, uh, is buffing slash debuffing which is what affects your damage uh i guess you can also separate that into buffers and debuffers because there are certain supports that focus primarily on one but there's also utility which is Mm. um defensive negation i guess that's a a way to put it uh and that could be like buff removers people who give sure hit or invuln pierce Pierce. Uh, yeah i consider that uh, that that should be considered a an offensive type um so we also have uh there's a i'd say there's a lot more nuance when it comes to uh uh, defensive support though Uh, because with defensive of course you've got uh, like defense buffers. Uh, okay, let's say buffers as in servants that can apply defense buffs or invuln or like Castoria, yeah. for example. Yeah, but there's also like engine, right? Like ones that allows allows you you to run, keep on running. Uh, yeah. Without running the yeah, gas. like healers. Yeah, healers. Uh, MP chargers. Uh, I think a lot like. A lot of the pure healers people don't actually like to use is because they're most of the top tier healers also do team MP regen, so it, it helps your entire sort of slower game plan uh, be able to keep on going. Cooldown management that that's an interesting way way to put it. Uh, I mean, cooldown management. There's like two characters that uh, pulled I, I, well there are I don't people, I, I don't think you uh, know what he meant by that uh, so no. cooldown management uh, it's stuff that patches those turns of downtime you have with cooldowns because like you're not always going to be doing a lot of damage uh, oh. a lot of people might be cycling through buffs so they're always outputting damage but if you're trying to last longer you're going to have downtime and supports are what are going to keep you alive during that downtime. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so uh, it's just healers. I mean, okay. It doesn't have to be healers. Really. It's not just healers. It's um, it can be taunters. It's really anything defensive. Um, like reducing cooldowns is a type of uh, cooldown management, I would say, but it's, uh, but, like yeah, what a, what do you use a taunter for? Uh, oftentimes, what I use a taunter like George, for example. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I usually try to have him timed out to come in when I have all my skills on cooldown, and he just mm-hmm. stays there 
tanks for a few turns, people are trying to get their NPs. Then when he dies, someone else comes in that has offensive value, and they have their buffs back. So oh, they, it's yeah. just to patch together those turns. Yeah. Ha happens a lot back in the day. I'd say, like, Hansi's makes this... Uh... Like, I mean, still, because, like, uh, there, there are what there, it's still better to have like top tanks, especially ones that you can refresh, maybe. Like, I, I think Leonidas is relatively interesting, yeah. Since you can, you can, you can, um, sort of refresh the taunt. Um, but too, too bad that he's a he is a two star. I think if, if there was a, I mean, there, there is like Kinchi Huang, never mind, just yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Him being a two star is kind of one thing that really sells him. Um, someone in chat asked to, where Smob would be. Uh, she wouldn't really be here. She would be in the uh, DPS. Yeah, the DPS group. Uh, but actually, you could kind of argue like somewhere in the middle there because she does have a lot of supportive value. Uh, yeah, but I'm but not. Like, I'm not sure I if I would use her as a secondary DPS. I think the ironic thing with her is that, like, she looks very supportive, right? Like, like you know, she she's helping all the other her turn buffs and whatnot. But her MP itself does not apply to the party. Her MP itself only applies to herself. So, like, you still need other supports to combo with her. Uh, and if you're bringing her as the sole support, I, I think in order to qualify as a support, you should at least have some form of ability to help your team if you are the only support. And I think she is incapable of doing that. Um, I mean, people might disagree, but I, I, I think she's definitely more of a DPS than, than a support. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, she just has a lot of really self-supportive things. Like, she has a lot of... Uh, a lot of utility and such that can that can make her look supporty, but she she's still a DPS at heart, I guess. Yeah. So we also have chargers, which is uh, uh, MP gauge, gauge. Gauge is it's spelled so weird. I always thought it was weird. I remember seeing it when I was a kid, and I thought it was gouge, gauge. Hmm. I know there's people who say gauge. I'll tell them that they're wrong because that's <laughs> that's dumb. Uh, so, NP gauge support. Uh, it it's something very general these days. It isn't really offensive or defensive. I would say. Uh, it can affect you offensively or defensively but that has more so to do with how you composite your team rather than the uh that particular support because like for example uh castoria could use her first skill and you could get um you could get a dps np out of it but you could also get it get like uh her own np out of it which is mm -hmm. defensive uh, and, and she also has a 30 to 50 percent attack buff uh, let's let's ignore that bullshit <laughs> god why did they why did they overtune her like they did uh, okay so buffers healers taunters let me open up fgo just to make sure i'm not missing anything um money no i disagree money they literally could remove her MP, she'd still be, like, she'd still make equal amount. Like, if her MP, if Castoria's MP reads heal the entire team with 100 HP, she'd still make as much money because of farming. So I honest, I disagree. I think it's generally, like, genuinely, they, they don't know how to fucking balance characters. Like, it, I'm, yeah. I just uh, I just remembered something which should be pretty obvious. Critical support. That that's kind of separate from buffing and debuffing because star gen is uh, stars per turn and stuff are tied to support and like they're tied to 
uh, like buffs sometimes, but then you also have star bomb supports like like Oberon and Korean Sky and and Scotty. All three of them have star bombs, uh, and then like stars per turn skills. That's always really good too. It, uh, star generator. Yeah, let's say star generator because uh, crit buffs would fall under buffers and debuffers, but there's other crit support on top of that. Mostly um, money. I, I still disagree. It's so easy to arts to farm, and if they made arts farm, it would have made money. Yeah, I mean, we went from... We went from you need super scope, you need your own Scotty, you need uh, uh, like all sorts of shit uh, to be like, able to three turn properly. And now we aren't there anymore. We have Castoria where you can go from 0%. Like and... another thing that breaks her is her spread charge. Like, like when Castoria came out, farming was all single core. There's like basically no multi-core on Castoria. And they 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 could have made Castoria like just art Scotty. They could have made her they could have just given her 250 battery, uh 150 battery instead of the spread 30. The spread 30 actually breaks her so much. Like th her spread 30 charge is one of the biggest reasons why people are like, oh my god, Scotty's MP sucks. But Castoria's MP is so good because Scotty's MP is super inaccessible when Castoria's MP is like free, right? So like, I feel um, like we've talked about this like each stream the last three weeks. Yes, yeah, yeah. Well, like that's the thing. The, the yeah, because I, I Bro, keep bringing Scotty's, up because Scotty's MP is getting mentioned more than how much we shit on Muramasa. <laughs> No, because it's how obvious it is. Like, the spread 30 MP is so stupid. Like, if you really think about it, if you're using your entire team's MP, if you're using your entire team's MP, right, her skill one's a 90 battery. Yeah. She has twice, she has more than double Scotty's battery amount. Like, if they just wanted money, they could have just made... Uh, Koi and Light. Koi and Light, in my opinion, is a lot more balanced than than Castoria. Oh yeah, definitely. It's still made a shit ton of money. Yeah, like Koi she, and Light is so much more balanced. She's basically Buster Scotty, uh, in my opinion. And I know that's funny because the new Scotty is also pretty Buster oriented, but yeah. uh, but it makes sense because like she does have like a tiny bit of general support, but it's largely focused on one card type. Like if you're yeah. If you're not using a quick servant, Scotty isn't very useful. If you're not using a Buster servant, there's actually a lot of situations where, where Vich supporting a non-Buster servant would be a bad thing, because uh, unless you want anti-man, you almost will never bring her. Like yeah. it's just yeah, because like you you do have the cooldown reduction and fifty percent battery. Uh, but I know some people might assume that what I'm about to say is the uh, is the HP reduction that's that's actually not that huge of a thing to me. Uh, a lot of teams can tank 1k yeah. uh, reduction every 8 turns just fine. Uh, the problem is her third skill has that absorption buff. And like even if you get that crit, that buster crit, that means arts crits and quick crits, which are going to be better for your NP gain, which is going to be mattering a lot more outside of Buster yeah. Servants. Yeah. That's it's going to be harder for them to use their NP. In my opinion, this is not about secrets about fire. Yeah, that's what I meant. They didn't have to make her this way. They didn't have to make her this good to make money. Like I I they they could they could literally like n they could like break her knees, she'd still be like S tier. Right? Like I this it's it's clearly just bad. Like Castoria is a year five servant built like a year ten servant. Castoria is a servant that's built before ninety plus plus with ninety plus plus in mind. She's a meta support with thirty spread charge that can use her MP for damage boosting, like that literally never happens and when she came out. It's also one of the best defensive support NPs in the game. Yeah, it, it wasn't even a thing when she came out. Like she's she came out to counter gimmicks 
that is two years older than her. Like, dude, <laughs> this character is so stupid. Uh, anyways. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I also added debuffers as a separate group for defensive, uh, for defensive servants, uh, because where, well, you'll have like offensive and defensive. Uh, okay, so offensively, you'll have buffs and debuffs that increase your damage. Uh, but with debuffing, it's not just, like, attack down or crit rate down. Uh, there's also some that will just completely prevent them from attacking, like terror or charm. Uh, so I feel like they need to be separated for this group, if not for this group. Because mm -hmm. uh, there's some servants that are very specialized in debuffing like this that don't really work the same way. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I think this covers most everything. Yeah, Let me... There's a bunch of categories. It's a lot yeah. more than how many filters there are in the game. Yeah. That's for sure. Um, I mean, to be fair, some of these you can sort uh, to get. Like you, with taunters, you can sort by target focus. Wait, actually, do they even have that? Wait, are you able to? Sort by no. buff on the servant menu? No. Okay, no. Never mind. Uh, you can sort these effects on craft essences, though. Uh, I guess there's that, for whatever that's worth. And yeah. I, I guess that's something else we'll have to talk about later, which is... Uh, I mean, I, there's, like, thousands of craft essences, but we'll probably only talk about, like, four or five. Yeah, I mean, th there's, like, a thousand craft essences where, like, 20 of them are usable, right? Like... Welcome to FGO. What about <laughs> esports? Well, esports, it's just these, but they die faster. Uh, it's. I mean, it's basically with esports. A lot of the time, uh, it's you'll have this offensive aspect, and then they also have some sort of taunt effect, uh, which you assign with a craft essence. So, uh, it's it's niche like. Outside of turn attack, I don't really see much of a uh, point to esports servants. Although I do keep some esports servants, like uh, like I got an extra Nobukatsu, <laughs> I have an extra Ibuki, but that's not because I rolled for uh, for esports. Uh, yeah, like basically. So basically, when later when we get into supports, there's gonna be two types of supports, which we did br briefly mention when we tried to shit on Game Press last week. Um, basically, there are supports you want to keep alive, and there are supports that you want them to do something and, you know, screw off, right? And then esports servants is basically turning supports that usually you would want to keep alive into supports that just buff and screw off. Uh, that's, that's just as simple as that. So, like, so basically normal, normal play, there are still supports that allow you to do this. You don't need to have them specifically see esports. I mean, if you want it to be more like consistent you can like keep matahari at level 40 for example right but like matahari at level 60 is still gonna buff and die so it really depends on you yeah yeah so um all right so i guess we can just jump into building a team here um we've already got this set up uh, I actually got to switch out Castoria. I was doing a solo with, uh, with Summer Castoria. And uh, just messing around. Whoa. Nothing happened. Nothing weird happened. Okay. So, let's start by evaluating some DPS. Just to see what types of things we might want to consider supporting. Uh, random DPS. Plushie, tell me a random DPS. Kijo Koya. Kijo Koyo, okay. Uh, so Kijo Koyo, uh, single target DPS, and uh, she's kind of fragile. She does have like this defensive stuff here, and she has a little bit of team healing, uh, but she's going to die if she gets hit a few times. Uh, so we gotta. So that's one of the things we'll have to worry about. We'll have to worry about keeping her alive. Uh, so. We have to also consider how fast will she die? 
because there's because like with defensive support uh as you'll recall we have we have healers which is, it's sort of anti-chip stuff but we also have defense buffs which uh both of those are more soft survival related but with with someone like Kijo Koyo, she's not going to live long enough uh, to just live off of a healing because she doesn't counterclass, uh, which is why usually I'll run over to taunters because with taunters you don't have to worry about um, you don't have to worry about how much damage the enemy is doing because it's never going to be directed at her. So. You could use Leonidas. Uh, the one that makes the most sense is usually Chen Gong because he has uh, support that's specifically geared towards her. Uh, he's just all around really good for this type of role because he's got uh, he's got like a little bit of defense buff for a couple turns, and he can taunt and get someone else out if you feel you're in danger. And he's also got this big uh, hero creation for berserkers specifically. He's just really solid for this type of role. Um, but this is Fate Grand Order. We have six slots we can work with here. Uh, so, like, cool, we found one. But what do we want with the others? And I can't double up here. Uh, you could feasibly double up if you're if you're running a team like with uh, with like you know borrowing supports. But since this is an advanced quest, I'm just doing one of each thing. So Merlin is an option. Uh, so Merlin would definitely help keep her, keep her alive longer. He has his hard survival on his second skill, which has got a bit of a cooldown that I don't like. Uh, but that can help keep her alive a bit longer. Then you also have her fragility, which might be a bit of a problem. But since yeah. we're also using him to reduce that damage he takes, and it, it, yeah, it's so the thing that I see here, like the so she does do some decent damage. She's going to be outputting damage the entire time because she's got red cards mm -hmm. and all that. Uh, but the thing is, like, you gotta keep her living longer. And yeah. what I see here. I don't think you need a Merlin. Yeah. Uh, the thing that I see here is when I'm running a team like this, when I'm looking at the front three, I got to think, ideally, who do I want to have die first? Chen Gong. Yeah. So I can manage that with him. So, okay, Chen Gong dies. I can have, like, let's say I went with Hans after that. Okay, so... Now we got these three out here. Who's the most likely to die? Kijo Koyo. Exactly. So we got a seven thousand effective HP. Yeah, dude. HP yeah, she's she's even great. She's grand. level one hundred. Yeah. Yeah, dude. She has the defense up, but you know she does yeah. have the defense up, but it's not. Yeah, she still technically has less HP than he does, unless you're up against Riders. So that's the th that's the thing that I. Uh, have to work with a lot when I'm using a, a berserker, for example. That that's yeah. basically what I'll always run with them. With a berserker, I'll run supports like Nobukatsu, who does some offensive buffing, but he's also got his own taunt. I like using George and Leonidas as well, and it's kind of funny um, because when you look at five star variants, there's really not much that replaces them as far as target focus goes, and it makes sense because like having Target focus can be really nice on a lower rarity uh, servant because they can you can manage them dying sooner. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's uh, so, that's why I always use these <laughs> basically. The the thing with uh, a berserker and Merlin, right? So imagine um, illusion is supposed to tank an MP for most people. Right, I illusions. The the most valuable thing about an illusion is 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 t it tanks MPs, but for a berserker, it does not need to be hit by an MP to die, when most other servants kind of do need to get hit by an MP to die. So yeah. what you're what you're forced to do a lot of times is pop illusion, 
uh, just to like, oh no, the enemy got like one crit up. I I I I better watch my ass. So I gotta like you know pop illusion, and and now it's got a long ass cooldown, you know, yeah. and only protecting your berserker for a turn. So alternatively, there's an infinitely better SSR you can put in his place, which is Koi and Dark. <laughs> I win. All right, bye. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, now we got thirty percent more defense for three turns. Yeah, we, we, there you uh, go. Yeah. Also, ten more charge. I so mean... the the thing that I would prefer about Merlin here, though, really? um, <laughs> I like that he makes stars passively. Um, oh, true, because Koyo has star absorb up and not star making. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah so uh, that's something. That's another thing I go with when I'm building a, a team. Like, I'll usually try to spread the purposes here. Like, I'll have one servant trying to. One of the supports sitting on the field with the DPS basically the whole time. I want them to have more long-term value or just good enough burst value that it's uh, they're worth keeping out there. Uh, so I'll usually give them like 20-30 or something. Uh, it depends on like what kind of uh, servant we're supporting. Uh, it can be Hans. Uh, I just like someone with stars per turn. Uh, so I'll usually give them like... like the 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 other reason why i like koi and dark here is because i don't trust berserker <laughs> um i i am i think they're gonna die so i don't like a team that only has one berserker as their sole dps usually unless i'm doing a min turn of course like other than that i when i run a berserker in a team usually i like to bring another person that is capable of doing dps yeah i do get my ass covered a lot because my koyan light is 120 so even if i bring quote unquote a full-on support set when my main dps dies koyan light can actually kill a lot of stuff but yeah. i think like you know for normal people i i prefer like having DPS. yeah i don't i don't grill supports unless you want to count summer buki as a support uh, the it's funny thing support. is, though, like, I, I know some people use her to, like, support shit. I, yeah. I, I tell you, every time I try to support someone with her, she just does more damage than them. Uh, you know that, um, the shell slash feather node on yeah. uh, the Paper Moon? Uh, I was trying to do this setup making, uh, a Black Grail Summer Kiara work. Uh, oh. And I was doing double Castoria... I'm uh, interested in It's not worth it, bro. Yeah, it's not dude, worth it to pick anyone. It's dude, just, no, especially like, for farming. She killed wave one, and then she didn't refund enough for wave two looping. So I realized, oh shit, I have enough charge for Summer Ibuki to NP. And her with a with a craft essence that does nothing for her damage was able to kill wave two, which has like I think 150k enemies. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, that, that, that's why she's great shit. multi-core. Like, she can help teammates. Uh, sometimes, if, if the teammates doesn't have enough damage, she can help them push that damage to the skill too. Uh, the only other place I see her actually being used as support is specifically min turn. Uh, and very often with one character called Kuku Khan. Um, because with Kuku Khan and Ibuki, she can use all of her skills uh, with du double coin light ibuki kuko khan in a min turn she can use all of her skills on turn two which is uh twice on turn two which is very unfair uh if you look at her self buffs you put all of her self buffs like you double that on turn two that is yeah it's 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 very unfair for for a lot of interns like that's that's the way she pushes damage but i mean yeah like ibuki herself is just a better yeah. DPS than ninety percent of the characters in the game. So. Yeah, yeah, she's she's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> it's kind of unfortunate. Uh, she also has the whole like crit set. Like she even like takes star. Does she t she takes stars? Right, she takes stars yeah. from other people. Yeah, yeah so, she like... makes stars. Uh, she has star absorb. Yeah, it's yeah. such a fair and balanced combo, you know. Yeah, so like she she technically um, takes stars away from people. Um, and she just steals it for herself to crit. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that happens as well. 
Yeah. So yeah, um, we're kind of limited here because we do have to play around the weaknesses of a Berserker. Uh, so it is possible to win with a more general team because like what most people do, um, they'll usually go something along the lines of uh, just double support and DPS, which is usually all you'll need. It's uh, It can work. Uh, sometimes people hit walls, though, that aren't really that high of walls. It's just they always try to go in uh, into every fight the same way. Yeah, and... just force double double meta, quote unquote, du double fifty chargers, basically double fifty charger uh, card type DPS. Yeah, and because of it, they end up uh, devaluing a lot of certain types of things because their playstyle is just so rigid, you know. Um, but that's what we're going to be doing here today. We're going to show some of the, those alternative uh, types of comps. Uh, so let's. Let's wipe this slate clean. Uh, actually, hold on. Before we do that, uh, let's switch back to Chen Gong. Let's look at some craft essences right quick. Uh, so, as I usually do, I usually go with this uh, with 2030 on the the what was that? I, the way I put it was um, a freestanding support. Uh, that's what I like to use that term for. Uh, but yeah, anyways, the the one support that stays on the field the entire time, I like having 20-30 on them, so like even if their skills are down, they're still doing something. Mm -hmm. uh, which, uh, yeah, like having 10 plus stars every turn is really nice. Um, of course, DPS craft essence is, uh, that that's kind of just dependent on DPS. Maybe, maybe you want to switch up the usual, uh, it, the usual is, it's just like 50% CE with something decent on it. Maybe it's high enough DPS check and you're not going to be penalized by Black Grail. Uh, she certainly would be penalized by Black Grail because she can't NP enough. Yeah, yeah, she doesn't um, have enough battery, she doesn't have, her card gains is fine, but yeah, she but, has three, bu three buster, yeah. Yeah, um, but yeah. That's what we got there. Uh, now we have to look at like what the other servants might have. So with Chen Gong, I'm thinking he'll be out there for like four turns. I'll have him pop his second skill once he gets out there, and then we're just he's just gonna chill out. Uh, and then when the defense buff goes down, she's probably still gonna be fine. Um, then I'll have him taunt himself out. So. What I usually look to, since his NP is useless here, I don't want to kill anyone on my team other than him, uh, I wouldn't go with starting charge, which knocks out like 90% of the things we talk about. Uh, so obviously not that. Uh, J basically what I would boil it down to is I would do like stars per turn, but not everyone has a bunch of 2030s. And also, he's only going to be out there for three turns. Um, so what I would go with, actually, I would prefer Star Bomb. I like giving him this one because it literally has him on it. Uh, oh, I know which one I mean. I mean, eh. Yeah. yeah. I, I would do that just because Merlin doesn't have immediate stars and he doesn't have immediate stars. Uh, and I might get, like, multiple red cards on turn one. Yeah. And with their battery combination, I think she can immediately NP, because this is 60% CE. She's got 18%. 60 is rare, though. Most people don't have 60. Well, yeah, even then, like, I'd still have 30% okay. between the two of them. So, uh, like, all I'd have to do is use one lore, and I'd still be in the same situation. So, with Star Bomb, uh, that's especially nice, because she does have her first skill... Uh, it's a one-turn absorb and a three-turn defense buff, and I'd like to use the defense buff as soon as possible. So if I have cards, I'd like to crit then. Uh, mm -hmm. And breaking a bar sooner is usually better than later. Um, I know some people might think that's some sort of a min-turn brain type thing, but it's just usually the case. Like that's 
several turns you won't be taking damage uh, because you just skip them that fast. Like min turn, okay, min turn obviously is a very showboaty way to play the game, but it's a legit strategy because the less amount of time you spend dealing with the enemy's bullshit gimmick, the the less amount of chance you get screwed over by it is. So the you know like not you know dragging it out is certainly a strategy, and especially with a lot of supports nowadays do allow that, but. If you drag it out, there the like, things that go wrong. It, there's a lot more chance for things to go wrong, basically. So like, if if you can finish things off fast, you would always finish off. Fast. Yeah. Um. So another thing I like looking at with, especially if I'm doing taunting supports like this, uh, I like looking at Cam Camlan, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah Camlan, because uh, this is just. It's 15% charge when they die. Like, I don't know if the... If a Star Bomb would do anything for him. Because his Star Bomb... Uh, because she might already have enough stars to crit by then. Because we've got his stars per turn. we got this stars per turn. And then... Putting 2030 on him is a waste. Because he has his own stars per turn of 15. And, like, between that and this and this, I'll have, like, 40. So, it's, it's just overkill. Yeah. Um, so with George, it can go a few different ways. I, I basically never put stars per turn on him because I'm not really banking on anyone's ability to crit with him around, which is something that people don't like about him. But as we were talking about earlier, uh, he can be cooldown management. That's usually what he'll do. Uh, so she doesn't have her skills up. He doesn't have his skills up. Uh, he comes out and we've got like three All turns, three turns. Yeah. yeah, and he's just going to sit there until uh, until he dies, and then we're going to have minus three turns on our, on our cooldowns. So with him, it's kind of just like, there's really only two options in my brain with him. Uh, sometimes there's a third option, uh, but the two options are either Kamwan, um, because like oftentimes you're just trying to build in peace while he's on field so you can np as soon as the next server comes in um but the other one is his bond ce uh, and that also really depends uh, i'm not sure if i would use it here in particular because i'm sort of banking on these two never getting hit so it would be good if they like if we had to deal with an aoe np but if we're dealing with a single target np that might not be that big of a problem and also, uh, it might conflict with his own invuln. Because uh, this invuln will sit there until it gets hit. And I've had situations where, uh, like if I'm using Atlas, which is usually my go-to Mystic Code, uh, I'll still have his hit of invuln active, and sh like she, for example, is the last on the field, and I can't invuln her. So she loses that one stack of invuln and dies on the same turn. So there's some situations where it's not that good, but I uh, I do uh, find it pretty useful in a lot of situations. It just depends on what invuln you have. Uh, I do another... agree with one of the chatters, though. Like, if it were up to me, I would swap one of those people for Habitrot. Habitrot. Yeah, yeah, that's another, that's another really good Because she's a woman. Pick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> woman. Yeah. Women inherently have it better in fgo uh, in terms of challenge quest because haber tried to exist like honestly yeah and we're here for that <laughs> we're here for that you know, women women empowerment um but unfortunately tyra had to be non-binary and you know not get buffed by it but sure. god damn it, it canyonist why won't you be my bride <laughs> You know, it's it, it's up to them, but like you know, like you're it, in in fate. It's a very cruel world. Your uh, your your identity might affect who can buff you. Okay. 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 All right. So, All right. so uh, so this is the other one that I mentioned uh, that you might throw on him. Ninety percent of the time, if you put this on George, he will not die in those three turns. You want him to die on that third turn. That's ideal. Isn't um, that just volume, but evade? 
Uh, this one's technically even better because it's got the damage cut. With uh, it. So uh. he'll take even less damage. So I usually prefer that one uh, because after the evade's gone, you still have a useful effect. Whereas Volumen is just like damage plus 500 more damage per attack. Yay. Yeah. Amazing. Um, but then sometimes they have sure hit. So uh, this one is just objectively worse in those situations. Uh, but the only times I'll run this on him are specifically when he just dies instantly and it's guaranteed. So if I'm up against a Berserker boss, ironically, I think I did that with uh, her boss fight from Summer 5, oh, 6? Yes, Summer, summer 6. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. uh, she only attacks twice, uh, which means yeah. uh, two hits go into this, uh, so he takes no damage, then two more hits and that second hit just demolishes him um, and then he has the guts yeah and yeah he has the guts so it's basically three guaranteed turns uh similarly with leonidas uh leonidas is a lot more complicated though uh he'll run a lot of different craft essences because optimally like his best case best use case is he in peace and yeah. Uh, depending on the enemy, you can give him 0% uh, charge and he would still get his NP immediately. Because yeah. he has one, plus 100% NP gain from being attacked on his on his first skill. And uh, also it's just in general NP gain, so uh, if he has cards it'll also do more. And he, yeah, it's just like... Uh, he also is a Lancer, so he has 4% base, so he gets 8% per attack he takes. Um, but I'll usually go with something, say, for like a 50%, 75% CE. Uh, he's basically guaranteed to get an NP with that. Um, but sometimes... Uh, this is like the thing that I like putting on him the most, because it's 15 stars, and it's... Uh, it's 50% starting charge. So that that gets him there. Uh, another option is... Uh, I mean, this is basically a downgrade of Golden Carp. Yeah, although that's kind of hard to get these days. Um, uh, there's also his rightful place, which I don't have on this account. I think they just added it to the shop, didn't they? It's the four yes. stars per turn. Yeah, I, I yes, like that one, too. Start. Yeah, that, that's a very... That is one that is also, like... One of the more valuables from the shop uh even for like min turns and stuff because like sometimes you just you don't need a burst of stars sometimes you need some stars later all right yeah. it's like and you know that's just it's it's very good on castoria as well like it, it's generally I, I like to use it on castoria yeah yeah um but yeah uh as i was also saying if they have high enough enemy hit counts, if there's so such high hit counts, like maybe on their NP, because you might be able to time it so their NP hits him, and if they have a 10 hit NP, that's 80% charge <laughs> right there. Uh, never mind the fact that defensively the overkill bug works as well, so if he drops below half HP, he gets 50% more charge, which is 12% per hit. <laughs> so. And he will get dropped below half HP. Yeah, if there's an in unless you grill him, but yeah, yeah, it, it kind of just depends. Uh, that it's not the same with George because he has a defense buff on his taunt, but he does not have a defense buff unless he NPs. Uh, that's something yeah. you have to worry about uh, playing between the two of these. Yeah, like he is very easily killed with the first um, first hit, of Leonidas. Yeah. Uh, when George, honestly, if you, especially if you give him even more defensive CEs, like, he can pretty easily take, like, a first or even second hit from a lot of enemies. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, as I was uh, talking about, like, with this, uh, I started to segue with this to that, and then I realized that there was so much shit to explain with them. Uh, so you can also run this. There are some situations where the enemy will attack so many times uh, that you don't need any starting charge and he just gets his NP from this. Uh, I think Zenobia was like that. Uh, the the one from the Halloween challenge quest that ended like a month ago. Oh, that uh, was... Yeah, uh... I think 
I think that's uh, what I used on him. And it also has damage cut, which helps him live longer. Uh, and that's something that's really cool about Leonidas. Uh, sometimes he can just keep living longer. Like, if you can keep him living, uh, like, beyond those three turns of taunt, he can taunt again. Uh, so, he's... In that way, he is better than George. Uh, George has his consistency, um, and and Leonidas has higher uh, potential, but he also has the potential of just dying in one turn. I I've had him just die in one turn before, because like the enemy crits, yeah. and then guts procs, and then they crit again, and then bam, he's dead. Also, there's different class coverage, because like you could be up against the saber, or an assassin. He, he also gets rewarded from taking hits more than George. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's he, the he, he rewards for a team. Uh, yeah, right. It's yeah. a team. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He has yeah. like he has a an AOE twenty five percent buster, and then he also has a a skill that yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, it's only up for three turns. The the trigger buff is only for three turns, but the the guts is for five turns, and you get twenty percent attack for three turns when guts triggers. Uh, the funny thing is, you can do, you can do some other funny things, uh, and you can, uh, you can give him other guts to get more attack. Like I've had him on the field at the same time as Asclepius before, and he, uh, he just gave the team another twenty percent attack. Also, if you're using Anniversary Blonde. Uh, you can give that to him, although you're probably better off giving it to her uh, at the very end if you still haven't won. But yeah, the, as someone in chat brought up and Plushy uh, let me know, there's also this one other ridiculous one, which is just like flat out one of the best options in this type of role, uh, which is Habitrot. Uh, unfortunately, it only works with women. Uh, so yeah, that, that's cool. Uh, but yeah, just being able to uh, dump heal per turn five turns to so 10,000 health. I think the guts has like 5,000 health. Uh, and then a one turn invuln, and the guts is five turns. Uh, so it, it's unbelievably stacked. And the downside is oh no, she dies. Oh no. Yeah. We're and like. <laughs> And like, if you don't immediately need it, she makes you can. She makes star. She's a star bomb for next turn. Yeah, right? you like, can give her any craft essence, and she in peace. Yeah, that 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 is also what I use her for a lot. Um, that's usually considered cheating in solos, but if you do like, uh, yeah, solo cheat exactly. You do Habertrot MP on one, so you get guaranteed crits on turn two. It's it's like, I don't know. It's just good. Super. Yeah, I'm, I'm with oh geez hello there habitrot um so with her craft essences it, it kind of varies i don't have her skills maxed so i usually go with something like this because it's stars and uh guarantee the np but i don't always use her np because sometimes i just have too good of cards and i don't want her to be alive at the time uh, mm -hmm. so you can also do star bomb when she comes in that that makes some sense although I do have Leonidas behind her. Oh wait, no, I actually have George behind her. Uh, that that's something actually you kind of got to be mindful of. Like with where George is placed in the team. No, sorry, directing away from Habitrot. Uh, you have to be mindful of like when he's coming out. Like when he dies, you won't have stars the next turn. So oftentimes you'll have to go with a star bomb. Like if I'm running. Uh, this guy after him. I won't have stars because George makes nothing and he takes everything. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of bad things about George, but uh, ultimately I still think he's a really solid option. Um, uh, but another really nice thing for her, I would say, is, uh, is Camelon. Uh, it might not... And again, it might not do anything because you might already have the NP. But, I mean... If you're more, if you're using more of an expensive team, it, it's still perfectly fine that she doesn't need a craft essence. So, 
Yeah, that's nice too. Oh yeah, the taunt seeds. Um. Uh, yes, uh, these. I usually don't talk. I wasn't going to talk about these taunt seeds until later because there's really only one that you'll reasonably be able to get, which is this one. Yeah. Uh, oh, it's right. one turn taunt. Uh, and I don't feel like it's as fitting on most of these, but actually with Habitrot, uh, a couple of them are very good, I would say. I like giving her this one, because that's one turn Taunt, and one turn Invuln, which means there's she goes out the, there. Yeah, there's also the Halloween one with 80% uh, defense. It's basically the same thing. It's basically the same. Uh, yeah, it, it kind of depends. Uh, yeah, I, I do have this one MLB, and I know that having multiple uh at a lower level would be more beneficial usually uh, don't worry i have multiple at a lower level i was trying to diff get a different craft essence but i'm still happy to get these because these are really good uh, yeah yeah but the usually people see these two as inferior because uh usually with a taunt ce you're trying to get that Kill target them. killed yeah. and they don't die otherwise but yeah like having this out here that gives you an extra turn of flexibility so like maybe the np the enemy is one turn away from their np she comes out and like her skill has an invuln but you don't want to waste the guts because the invuln won't be there anymore so she can come out and you can chill out for that turn and then and then you throw the the invuln on her and then you get to save the guts. Habitrot's just really fucking good, by the way. Oh, yeah. hi, Castoria. <laughs> all, all of her skills are good. Her MP's good, both as a DPS and support. There's, like, nothing to complain about the character. I don't know. The, the character's really, really good. Um, but, hey, you know, it's following Lost Belt 6 sort of trend, I guess. Yeah. So. Yeah, um... There is a better version of Camelon. Uh, it even has no HP stat, which is pretty useful if you're trying to get that servant to die. But it hasn't been around in a really long time. I think that was the Da Vinci Lotto, wasn't it? Oh, wait, which one again? The, uh, the one with Jalter, uh, with the the lap pillow. What merciless one? Yeah, the yeah, merciless one. The... It yeah, I say Virginia. lap pillow. The guy's fucking dead. <laughs> well, yeah, that's why it's called the merciless one. It's a very merciless lap pillow. Uh, that's that's a combination of words I, I didn't expect. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, I gotta get a drink again. Like that's te, in my opinion, like the three best. Three best free CEs that haven't rerun is going to happen during 30 mil. So it's Golden Catches a Carp, it's Ox King, and it's Merciless One. They've been holding back on these three for the CE shop rerun. I'm betting they're going to... But wait, what about Wandering Tales of Shana O? They already, they already added it. Oh, they already did? Yeah, they already added it last time. Oh, shit. Yeah. Wow. But basically, all right. We already got the best ones. Three. What the fuck are you talking about, man? It, it it's it's not the how is that the best one? The quick up is one turn. It's but you see, when it all. came out, there was no one that gave quick at all. Yeah, but it's still only for min turns, kind of like hard to time. Like, what if you just don't want to use your quick up next turn? I mean, I guess the I guess the one good thing is like there there was that one very specific situation. There was like this min turn that uh, someone did with Bazit on the Wanjina challenge quest and oh, managed yeah. to one turn because of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah I remember that. Yeah, if, if you need one turn burst, for sure, for sure. But also, like you you need you need the target to die without having a taunt C. That's another hard part. Like the, the, the best part about Ox King is it's on and it's on entry. And it's not on death. So it's a lot easier to use. Uh yeah. yeah. 
Well, um, okay. So, what what would we be talking about next? Let's see. Uh, let's let's try building again, uh, building around someone that isn't a berserker because it's a lot, it's a lot more complicated or more specific what you have to do for a a berserker. Okay. So tell me a tell me a servant that isn't a berserker. Also, that... isn't arts. I, I yeah. Hate... Arts is a... Yeah, let's continue to go with Buster while we're still on Buster. Koi and Dark. Koi and Dark, okay. Okay, so... So we gotta look at what we've got here with Koi and Dark. So she's got Team Charge, which means building a team around her that gets something out of their NPs is actually really nice. So Chen Gong is a bit of a weaker pick for her, especially since she has the targetable overcharge thing, although the, the Buster... The stars from Buster thing would be wasted on them. Like, it's always wasted though. Hmm. Um, and then she's also got Inborn Pierce, so she's got a lot of self-reliable, like, offensive, like, crit stuff going on. Um, she's also got an NP that removes offensive buffs. Uh, she hmm. increases her attack and increases. Uh, Buster resist down, so it decreases Buster resist. Uh, so, huh? nothing. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, she's got like the defense buff. She's not terrifically tanky, but the fact that she's at neutral wherever she is and she has five star stats that that does help her a lot comparatively. Yeah. Uh, so she is not going to be as much of a uh, a babysitting scenario. So I I'd... really, chatter. You you mentioned Himiko. Like you mentioned all these characters without mentioning Van Gogh. Jesus. Wait. Anyways, um, uh, I'm gonna be so... honest. I kind of do like the idea of running Himiko in this uh, this third slot here. Because Himiko does have really good Stargen for three out of five turns. And then like you can also have her you can also have her in P and you get some Buster and Crit. Um uh, it I think I, does better Stargen. Well yeah, but uh the thing she can use her NP twice like almost immediately, especially with coins. Yeah, there. yeah, but she has to use her NP for that. Uh, so? If I want to do a brave chain, like a, a crit brave chain. Okay, well, if we're talking about Kui and Dark, okay, yeah, definitely Van Gogh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, oh, I was yeah, just yeah, talking yeah. about in general. Himiko is pretty good yeah, for yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's fair. Um, But since we're not as worried about survival, uh, we don't have to go as hard on, uh, on like, taunts taunts and stuff yeah we don't have yeah. to worry about as much defensive stuff uh that being said i do kind of like the idea of running someone like leonidas but we're, we're gonna go for yeah. variety sake here uh so i think hans would be great uh because he gets something out of the overcharge he gets something out of the charge yeah. uh he can get his np pretty easily miss crane yeah. uh i'm not sure about using Miss Crane for this. Uh, Miss Crane does work in the third slot, uh, as I've found. She's actually pretty decent there. It's just you have to play a very particular way. Uh, like, yeah, Miss Crane's animal, but, like, it doesn't really... I I don't think it benefits her as much as any other animal. Uh, <laughs> to be like, like, I'm sorry. It's just... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and speaking of animals, yeah, that, that really sells her in this role, and that's going to mean that she'll have an easy time living uh yeah just best friends with yourself yes yeah just stack koyans like honestly gen genuinely i think if you stack a bunch of koyans together it's just kind of a good it's kind of a good team because like i i prefer double dark but like if we're if we're saying yeah. like no um yeah but yeah actually it's not a you got not a koyan no you gotta you got a point here sir uh, no 
I can't fill up the whole team with the unfortunately. I can I think I can do it on my alt. Uh cuz I've got Tama Shark. And I have Oh yes. Oh yeah, true. Tama uh Tama Lancer, I forgot. Yeah, Tama Lancer is a good one. Dude, I I almost min turned uh like the original Woodwoes fight by accident with uh with these two and Tama Lancer, and they were all in P1 too. So, Gary <laughs> is a good team. Is it pre buff or post buff? Um, yeah, post buff. Post. Yeah, yeah, dude, that, that, makes sense. that buff is really nice. Yeah, that buff removed the demerit and it also made it like a really good skill. It, it didn't just add a battery and remove the merit, it also extended duration, right? So, like, I it's it's such a good buff. It just yeah. doesn't buff her offense. It does buffer offense still. It's not like I, on AMPs. You still. know what? No one will, no one will notice the difference here. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Um, yeah, actually, she will. She won't buff her. She's racist. God yeah, I don't it. know why she's not animal. Uh, apparently, Shiki with bunny ears from like a party store is this... more of an animal than Uzuka goes in. <laughs> oh, and. Uh, Caster Berserker, uh, or Saber Caster Berserker, uh, her second ascension doesn't count, right? No. Saber Caster Berserker second ascension, in fact, does not count in the <laughs> yeah. I don't know how that fucking works, but there you go. <laughs> yeah. She's got a uh, thing against blondes, I guess. Um, so... So, if we're going to be talking about, um, like, who, like, I have to ask this question that we uh, asked before. Who is going to die first? Who's most likely to die first? And in this case, it's not going to be her. It's not going to be her. It's going to be him. And that's, that's kind of ideal, I'd say. Um, but for added stability, uh, we can, we can, like, say maybe we're up against a single target or an aoe if we're up against an aoe enemy like something that has a high damage aoe noble phantasm that can just wipe all three of them then we have to have ways of keeping her alive and her alive but still letting him die hmm. um so we can assure one of them lives with our mystic code uh yeah maybe just getting through with that is fine uh, so I generally don't know how you keep the other one. Up. Yeah, I'm not joking. I genuinely did not know how to keep. Yeah. Them. So yeah, now we have to. Now we have a problem to solve before we even get into the fight. Um. So one thing you can do. It's a bit random. You can give her this, uh, and that would let her survive that. But the problem is she can just randomly lose that. Oh my god! I gotta let the dog out. I'll be right back. Animal trait buff. That's why the dog. I'm out of jokes. But yeah, uh, Koyan Dark is pretty interesting. I plan on making a second review on her. I kind of feel bad for making two reviews, but then I realize Mr. Three Letter Name makes like five reviews on the same character. Stop feeling about it, you know. Ah, but I do need to have some time to do it, though. I don't know what I can offer different first review. Because I really sold her short on the first review. I think I called her the worst, the worst Koyanskaya. I mean, it's not wrong, because the other one is better, like, generally, but... Audio... No, uh... Auto left uh, to let the dog out. Who let the dogs out? Who let the dogs out? Barguest, speaking of which, is... Honestly, Barguest is not that good of a teammate. Like, Barguest is just... Barguest's best teammate is Air. Unfortunately. What about... Her, her, uh, what about, uh, Barguest? I said her best teammate is Air. Air. Because, like, nothing. 
Air Cause, Bud? Because uh, I, I want to keep using her, her, uh, her skill, her, her skill. Too. I want to be able to proc her skill two, four times. But yeah, anyways, that, that's beyond the. Um, yeah. We only got into that conversation because of the dog. Got it. Well, well, he's outside now. Hopefully, he'll be quieter. Um. So what? What was I talking about? Um, you need to keep the other one alive from an oh, AVMP. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, it can be a bit random because she can't get randomly attacked three times. Then you don't have the hard survival. It just depends on uh, RNG and like how long it is until you have to deal with the damage. Yeah. Uh, because if it's like three or four turns, then that's rough. Uh, but it's all just contextual. Uh, you can just reset in case uh, you don't get the outcome you want. But there are other ways. Oh, sorry. You go first. Um, there are other ways uh, of working around this. Maybe you don't start with Hans. Uh, what you can do to work around it, you can take someone like uh, George. And oftentimes what I'll do, I'll run George with his bond CE. Uh, and that means they'll get that hit of invuln. Uh, and I could also keep this craft essence if I want to, uh, for even more survival, but I'll probably just go with 2030, just for more star consistency. But, mm. okay, well, maybe he dies a turn before uh, the the turn where they're... Uh, like, the but next server comes out before... It, yeah. yeah. Uh, like, if this procs... And there's still one turn until the NP. They can still lose that one stack. So the way you go around making it, making sure that doesn't happen, guess what? You use another taunt. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that, that's that's ge ge genuinely what you do. You just keep on protecting them. Once. Although what I would do there, actually, instead of like, you could use Leonidas or something, or. Maybe Nobukatsu. Uh, Nobukatsu is very likely to die, though. Leonidas is not as likely. Uh, you could use Mash. Uh, I think Orton X Mash, or just normal Mash, yeah. actually, would work pretty well there. Because yeah. she has that one taunt that can let her get, the, yeah. get, get that NP. Uh, she and has then, an invul. Yeah, she can invul herself. And then after that, we've got, uh, we got the NP and the, yeah. And yeah. You just got a way of working around that. Personally, though, what I prefer is Habertrop, baby. Let's go. Let's do do that again. Do no joke again. Okay, yeah. All right. Honestly, like, like for example, if if you start okay. with Hans, what I do is I plug in Habertrop in uh, in place of Hans, and then Habertrop, uh, Habertrop, you know, dies. Yeah, then... that's that's another thing you can do. Uh, I usually work without plug suit because I really do like how Atlas oh, lets you, you like use Atlas. skills. Yeah, multiple true. times but a lot of people do use plug suit and like the og plug suit is still really solid um in that case you can go for someone who has like some sort of aoe invuln or evade or something and you could just uh yeah, yeah, plug them in true. when uh like, when um, that's david when the goings i think uh, david or, or or for my sake i can i can use the rats uh, oh cause... true they do rats are actually pretty good rats is However, though Rat is some some is a character I would like to keep on the like Rats gives a lot of value. Continue. Yeah, yeah, and honest, yeah, they also get the animal buffs. So. Oh yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, Rats is like unironically like yeah, sure the Buster buff is kind of wasted, but like it doesn't in this context. Rats is yeah. a great. Rats also Gen Stars. I mean, I kind of hate that term, but like Rats, they're already Gen Stars, but then their MP Gens even more stars like they're actually yeah. a star engine yeah dude yeah yeah I, I really like yeah I, I really like it dude like they've got stars return for the team uh for not the team but it's basically then they got heal per turn for the team they've got np charge per turn for the team and then np gain per turn for the team as well as evade for the team <laughs> like, yeah. they have so much stuff they have more supportive effects than uh, than a lot of low stars do, and they're a DPS. Yeah. yeah, rats are. I think they tried to replicate that with um, Talaluk. I think Talaluk's design is like 
kind of similar to what rats do, but it's like more field centric. But I don't think it's as good. Um, but yeah, yeah. Anyways, not important. Yeah, I haven't really used Twalik much. Uh, her mats. Actually, I don't know if her mats are bad. Uh, it's just back when I rolled her beyond NP5 because I rolled on both Tez and Cuckoo. Uh, I, I tried leveling her up and then I ran into multiple mat walls and I was like, nah, I'm, uh, I'm not dealing with this shit. <laughs> so. Yeah, Talal looks like damage cut and then she buffs other people when she MPs. So she kind of is like, and she has like, you know, self charge. She, she has her like MP looping is very similar to rats, just worse. Um, but, um, you know, she tries to do something I feel like similar to rats, but it's just not as good. Like, rats are just better it, at doing it. Dude, um, some people in chat might remember this. There was like this, uh, it was during that tower event, the, the shoe tower event. <laughs> what a strange term. Oh, yeah. Term. Maduta, uh, um, yeah. I, uh, I had like these three separate uh, floors that I tried to do. Uh, like I tried one of them with Twalik uh, and two other support servants that made sense. She failed. Then I switched over to um, uh, what other pretenders? Uh, one of them was Faker, uh, and Faker worked. Uh, one of them was uh, Cinder, not Cinderella. Uh, the tiny Liz, that's a pretender. Oh, 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 the um, and, and yeah, she yeah. worked. Nine yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was just really comical how just like one after the other, none of those three, uh, Twalik worked on. Like I think the third one she barely didn't do. Ugh. Uh, Unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. It's just like the weakest pretender. I tell you. Yeah, that that is why. Okay, Talalak's performance gave me so much PTSD that when I read Summer Bob's kit, I thought she was still gonna be bad. Bro. Yeah, I was like, it's a four-star AOE pretender. She gonna be trash, bro. But you know, I mean, she's not that good at farming and whatnot. But turns out, not dying is pretty good, and healing like eight thousand every turn is pretty good for ten turns, for yeah. 20, 24 turns, whatever. And, good yeah <laughs> so yeah uh, rats they have the team of aid that'll keep them alive for a bit longer but like they get plugged in uh this team is going to live for a good bit uh but like where do we go after that like what if we still haven't eliminated the enemy by the time we got another np to deal with i think mean, honestly because the like the between the three of them they have enough hp and like they've got region uh they're probably going to live to the next np depending on counterclassing stuff uh can you use ssrs oh yeah i guess uh i just want to keep something uh, at least reasonable i, mean, I guess uh because like like for example the rats like it doesn't have to be the rats it could be david it could be uh Tristan yeah. uh, there, there's I mean it could be the Valks the Valks actually do something I mean, last, slot, last slot could still be Habitrot yeah Habitrot's a really really safe pick like, in most situations so. yeah like the thing with Habitrot as well is like if, if she's if she's last and like if everything dies the way you want to and then like for example Koi and Dark is the only one left alive her guts is slightly more valuable because of solo um, it, like if you force into a solo, like in the end, um, she's like one of the better picks, All right? So like, yeah. Uh, I don't know why I right can't there. find her. She's right. She's down there. She's, she's b below Van Gogh. There we go. The left of Merlin. I, I, I there. keep. She just blends in so well. She's so tiny. She's not even tiny in the the art. What do you mean? Look. Like when 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 you're a, a man that has to wear prescription binoculars, everything is the same size to you. <laughs> she just has pink hair. All of these characters pink hair. Yeah, like there's so many pink characters. That's my excuse. Yeah. Unless that doesn't work, then I'll find another one. <sighs> uh yeah, so it's 
when you're not working against class disadvantage, it, it's not as hard to build a team around it. Around uh, one servant. But, like, if it's a berserker, for example, it can be a bit harder. Uh, but this is... Actually, yeah, this is a very general type of team. Like, it's not really card-specific. Uh, beyond this, I suppose. But, like, uh, I guess in a similar situation, you could take, like, uh, let's say you're doing a, uh, a quick one. You can just use a Scotty instead. And, like, this is probably going to work about the same... Uh, and the the Maybe same her, her not. about actually I mean I guess she's not as tanky uh, but uh, I, the, I guess the term that the uh, that I heard them using is card agnostic supports what uh, the f <laughs> who says that I, I saw like one person say it okay so like it's a very yeah, complicated way of saying it I, I I mean, there's also one person who says Buster Reloading. I don't respect him. Oh, man, he's not it. Uh, no one even mentioned that. <laughs> man. Uh, I'm sorry. You, you good, man? <laughs> no. <I'm... laughs> you need a minute? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh boy. Oh. You you want to go outside and uh, tell my dog to shut up, like and give you something nah, to be busy about? Nah, I'm I'm good. I'm good. I'm... Fco always inventing new words. Nah, it's it's people who are obsessive about this game that are making up new words to make themselves sound smarter. But it's you know I'm also obsessed with the game. So, yeah, yeah, I, you know. I know. Whenever I make fun of people for caring too much about this game, there's a there's it's a bit of us. myself in that that I yeah. acknowledge. Unfortunate, really, really. I, I yeah, it's it's a sad thing. Yeah, well, at least I don't I try don't to know. marry characters. Lamau, waifu, Crean. Okay. I'm gonna... See, I don't, I don't have waifus. I have female characters that I appreciate a lot and like a lot. But that's, but that's just waifus, Otto. Well, you don't understand. well, I'm, I don't sit there uh, pretending that I'm married to them or wishing that I'm married Pretend. to them. Pretend, like, dude, I, 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 I'm gonna be honest. I don't wanna, I, I don't wanna be married to any of these people. Uh, most Damn. of them would fuck me up. Like, they would, Damn. they would ruin my life. <laughs> Damn. But like, if you think about it, didn't Koi and Skaya offer to like hire you or something? After Not me the whole particularly. Thing no, no, it, it, the master is oh. like hire. I like you what can you can work at my company after what the fuck would this I do? whole thing. And I don't know. You can be a weapons dealer. You can sell the terrorist uh, weapons. Yeah, that's that's something that. Well, I hope my resume is uh, is adequate for that. <laughs> oh yeah, she also has a casino. I don't. Yeah, how weird. the fuck anyway. would you write that on a on a resume after after you leave that job? God damn. Um, <laughs> illegal uh, arms dealer. I dealt uh -huh. arms in other countries, and it. Uh, the the laws here didn't prevent me from doing that. <laughs> Koyanska is hiring terrorists. Uh, she sold weapons to some people that ended up almost killing her. So there you go. Yeah, dinosaurs. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The... Okay, let's uh, let's not get too into that. Mm -hmm. uh, like that's all. Those are already kind of scary words for the for YouTube algorithm. Yep. Okay. So let's take... Hmm. Name another DPS that isn't Buster. Let's say one that isn't Buster. Senno Riku. Okay. 
Um, one that isn't a, a, a okay. So, uh, oh, is so it a berserker. Yeah, she's a berserker as well. And as I've found, she kind of plays the same uh, as a lot of uh, like Buster berserkers. So, like, I would I would run a team fairly similar to uh, the one that Kija Koyo has because. Like, yeah, but she... with quick support. Eh, that's yeah, well, there's not quick supports though for low rarity. So, like, we have one, and I don't think he synergizes very well with her. If anyone tells me Alexander again, I'm going to end. Okay, I'm just... Um, how about uh, how about a uh, how um, about a? Uh... But like, since she's a berserker, uh, part of the reason why. Uh, like, the third slot, I would still have it be Chen Gong. Not because Buster cards oh, or Buster crit. support. But yeah, 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 he has the massive crit boost. And uh, it's easy to forget just how huge that burst can be if it's on a 5-star. Because she has 5-star stats. Like, if, if you got full, like, 16.6 .6 attack, like, bro, that's, that's a lot. Do you have? Might not reflect as much on a two or three star, but uh, on a five star. Quick, do you have Quick. a Saber Medusa? No, I don't have no. Saber Medusa. Do you have what? What quicks do you have? I want to build a quick character. Quick <laughs> character with inherent I, survival. I, I don't have very many quick grails, actually. Oh, I mean, I have. I mean, there's one like, right there, I and mean, we just talked about her, but. Oh, you must mean this one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, this one. Uh, I thought you might have actually been referring to the rats, but yeah. Uh, so, she's kind of weird uh, with how you build with her. Because the way you build her, uh, you don't... Well, since like there isn't much options for quick, uh, the way you go is with arts in, in P-spamming type stuff. Uh, I found that, like, the best low rarity support for her period is Shufu. Which is weird, mm. but it actually just, like, it, you you play it out, it makes so much sense. Because her arts cards are nuts, and you can just easily spam her NP over and over and over again. Uh, and she's, offensively, I would say she is very strong. She, uh, like, she gets... Invuln Pierce every time, and then she's got uh, crits that happen. And since she's a rider, she doesn't need absorb. So like she and P's once, she is in, she is critting for the next five turns, basically. Um, and then after that, it's just like contextual stuff, like things that I think will keep them alive longer. Uh, so I. Uh, but for us to get into that, like I wouldn't go with most of the Buster supports. Hold on, I need to get another drink. I think it really shows how big of a mistake that it didn't make Shufu a quick support. Like, honestly. I Like, FGO hot takes right here. FGO hot takes. Shufu would have been a be better quick support. She would have still been a better buster support for Assassin you may in specifically because she has buff removal resist. Right? Like, doesn't that just work with her? You I don't see, understand why. See, that's the that's uh, the thing, though. Uh, she doesn't work with... with with you that's that's the entire thing oh yeah because they have bad synergy but she tries to help her uh i guess dude that's so meta like come on <laughs> wait uh, i know she gives another 20 percent to you uh, is there anything else she gives her on their third skill i forgot um actually i think it's just a charge right does that have star absorb or something i don't let me check. I, yeah, I you just remember. never use her with you, May Ren. Like, it's just... Because, like, I, I would never know because I never use her with you. I think I used her with you once. Um, on the Olga quest. I think I did. But, like, she's probably going to be better with the arts. Oh, 30% MP damage. Yeah, MP damage up as well. Yeah. That's pretty nice. It's good. Um, it's good. I could see her working a bit better... better a bit better with... um. With the quick summer one. you yeah because yeah the quick one uh primarily because you're just not going to have as many options with her uh, but yeah. also her star gen isn't really that 
great, I would say. So having her. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Despite being it stars. Yeah, be nice. Yeah, unfortunately, twenty percent battery, twenty you know, percent of pinned, and then fifty percent battery. It's just not going to work out. <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. Um, so now we're going to talk a little bit about other types of supports because, like, we went over a lot of the the lower rarity like buster supports and and some of the higher rarity ones but uh, but we also should look at some of the uh the non-buster supports because they play pretty differently and they're usually more craft essence reliant than others uh so when we're talking about those we've got got some more niche uh, like most of them are more arts related so I I did already mention uh, Zhang Jue. However, the, uh, there's like multiple ways of pronouncing it or, or spelling it. Yeah. I, I don't know this guy. Yeah. Was that guy. He's the, don't the ask field, my chat. The field guy. <laughs> don't the ask. Field, the field. Yeah, don't ask my chat what uh, we should name him, though. Uh, I got a bad answer last time. Um, oh, yellow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So we also got Paracelsus. Uh, Paracelsus is very uh, one trick, I would say. It's just NP gain, like he NP gain and guts. Uh, that's the only thing he does. Uh, I know he has the twenty percent arts buff, but twenty percent arts you can get twenty percent anything these days. Like you can go for Bodica, and she's gonna uh, give you more damage support than him. But yeah, like that stacks on top of the NP gain buff. So if you're using an AoE art servant, it can get you some good gains. Um, uh, but usually, Jufu is just going to be better for that. So unless you need the the guts, uh, I I always go with her instead because she also gives you the 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 stars that'll let you crit, which means more NP gain. And he has no stars. Uh, so with him, uh, like. Maybe I'll put him in the same team, same team as Jufu, but that's just like if uh, I'll usually put him further back uh, because if they're on the field at the same time, it's just overkill. Because if she's whooping off of NP Buster A, there's uh, just with that, then there's no reason to loop to try and throw him into the mix because he doesn't boost the damage; he just makes more gain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Bodica. Bodica these days is pretty good. I don't have her leveled because she takes a bitch amount of bones. Uh, Does it make her a level one? Honestly, like I, I still get, like oh. she is actually a esports servant that everyone can get. That's free. That I genuinely think provides good enough buffs, like at level one, if you do have the Roman command code. Like well, her skill one is so busted. This is a crit up. Let's see. Uh, For you to get the skill one upgrade, you have to max her out first. And the problem oh, is. Oh, you don't, don't even have one? I don't want to oh, wow. ascend her because she takes a bitch amount of bones. <laughs> you don't even have one! Bro. Yeah, one. that's how a lot of these uh, these not quite ascended servants are. They, they take bones or proofs yeah. or something, and I'm like, is it really worth it? Uh, but, oh, yeah. And. Uh, just on the note of Bodica, um, Bodica versus Paracelsus, if you don't need really much on the NP gain, Bodica is just better than Paracelsus in basically every way. Because they both have targetable guts, but hers lasts longer and it has an HP buff on it. Um, uh, mm -hmm. Then they both have an NP that uh, reduces enemy damage, but hers is 40% for one turn, 20% for the other two. And his is 10% for three turns. Although it is easier to get his NP because he has a big battery. Big bad. Yeah, big bet. Yeah, but she's got, on top of the 20% arts, uh, it's, uh, by the way, this is just so funny. Uh, this skill is on a five turn cooldown if you max it out. It's 20% AoE arts for three turns. This skill mm -hmm. is on a seven turn cooldown when you max it out. It's 20% AoE arts for three turns. 
he uh he definitely could could use uh yeah he needs some help and th honestly though like i feel like all they need to do is just upgrade his np again and put some useful effect on it like, support yeah like, we could do cool. like team arts or arts resist down something like that yeah the, the the thing with a lot of people that wanted him to get a targetable battery is just they just make him shufu <laughs> yeah so like it's almost like like the shufu kind of stole that design space unfortunately um so yeah see see some people want a buff on his first skill and i think that the best buff for his first skill is to buff his mp because uh because oh like, yeah because the MP a dead battery first skill lets him use his mp yeah, yeah. Yeah, and if you buff the NP, then it'll not only will it do a normal amount of damage, and it'll do it very easily, uh, but then he can also have some other effect on there that uh, helps the team, and that's like the that's one of his biggest problems. He has two effects that are worth anything. Yeah, I do like that he can overcharge NP sometimes, though. That's cool. It's just not yeah. valuable enough because uh, it's not good enough. Yeah, because, like, if we're going to talk about, like, some sort of caster that does that, uh, we got this guy. Uh, he actually has an NP that reduces uh, card resists, uh, and he has a 50% battery. So unless you're going to max his first skill out and his second append, what? which don't, like, his... He has 30. He doesn't have 50. He has 50. Yeah, yeah, he has 50. Well, you mean the old guy? Yeah. He has 50? Yeah. Yeah, I, I know. It's a I shock. Was, I thought he was 30. Oh, no nah. wonder I did. No, he's he's like the one AoE quick server that didn't get a 30%. <laughs> wow. Old old Chinese wisdom. Oh, yeah. Also, um, uh, you know how I was oh, talking she, about... Uh, oh, you know how Bodica has the, the AoE arts? Um. Uh, yeah. Three turns, 20%, five turn cooldown. He has that with yeah. quick. <laughs> yeah, I, I do know that. Yeah, but like Vodica, like Vodica's post was not good enough like before the, the command code. Like, let's be real. I, I think her buffs are not that good enough uh, before the command code. With the command like, code, she, she's really solid, I'd say. Yeah, she, she's she's leaning very heavily on the command code because like it's sixty percent universal P mod. Like that is, that is like that is more than event bonus damage sometimes. Like a lot of times it's only fifty percent. It's like literally more than event bonus damage. Like it, no, yeah, like it's it's a uh, yeah. Oh really my god, stupid. look at that that MP description. Surely there's better ways of nah, uh, no no better way of representing that. Um, but yeah, like he also there has. There is. They could just put the. They could just com compile the the fields. Yeah. Oh no, they can't. I mean, I mean, they he, could he say, say they could say the card type that reduce... corresponds to the color of the field. I don't know. They could say reduces quick arts buster resist and crit rate down depending on the type of field present. Uh, and, yeah, and then. Well... It's basically just match the colors at that point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, actually, hold on. You just wish the resist downs were an RNG. I, I don't know why, why I'd like to do that. Like, it, it affects him somewhat, but the, the the one person that gets demolished by this is Daryl Donna. <laughs> I just, it, it's actually sad. Like, I, I, I think he, he should not have had the arts... Art style and VRNG. I oh, guess. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why they did I, that with him. Because he's like a. He's, made he's a funny, inconsistent guy, right? Like, haha, he's. It's so funny when he's like a goofball in the story. So let's make him like trip every now and then when he's in actual gameplay. I. Yeah, dude. Like, they they just did it to make you want to use Casco with them. Uh, yeah, yeah. Debuff success Art. in the star gen. Because yeah, he has like six or seven hits on his NP. It's weird. Anyways. It's like Rin. Like, they always give Rin an RNG skill for some reason. Like, it's just, I don't. It's like, haha, okay. yeah, Rin, Rin oh, screws okay, up. But all hers the time. is 85%. Imagine being Ilya. I mean, yeah, you're right.
Ilya gets to have like is it seventy percent every time? Yeah. Ilya's I don't even see I like I, I wouldn't consider it. Because like, like every Ilya has has that random thing. Like that that, that is nine. almost as bad as Imperial Privilege. Imper Imperial Privilege usually also pairs with like a skill that increases buff chance as well, so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like, Aussie, maybe. Anyways, uh, enough about this guy. Like, I mean, he... Well, okay, I guess he is relevant with her. Because uh, she does have a quick art stack. And then he has, like, this absorb skill. Uh, the absorb barely does anything most of the time because it's only plus 200%. Uh, but since she's a writer, it doesn't matter. And it's 100% crit for a turn. So that that is pretty notable. So maybe I would use him there, uh, but again, like the thing that I gotta worry about with her is keeping her alive. So it's pretty easy to keep Jufu alive, as I've, I've come to realize, because her NP is basically a full heal, and uh, it's easy to get that with mighty chains over however yeah, sometimes many Sometimes she leaves. Sometimes she lives too well. I guess not really. Yeah. Anyways, I, like I put Bodica up there just for the sake of an explanation. Um, so you could go with something like George, I guess. Um, if... I, I would say that one of the better ideas is to go with something really squishy, like maybe Matahari. I, I could go with Matahari, and then mm -hmm. um, we get more crits going on. She's most She's the most likely person to die there. Um, and then we have the next servant come in to... Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, but I do really like the idea of using Asclepius here, because one of the great things about Asclepius, uh, I think he's kind of a staple here, uh, even though he's not as accessible as all the others. Uh, he you only is... need one. His MP level doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, it, sometimes it does, but uh, a lot of the time, no. Uh, if you're up against... If you're, main healer. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, if you're up against an AoE boss... Uh, like a boss that will use an AoE NP, that's what I mean. Uh, he is really good for that because he can help manage the NP with his second skill, and then he can also uh, clear debuffs and he can help stabilize if uh, if you have him come in afterwards. Because I, I would never put him up front, uh, I would always put him further back. Uh, but also, he the fact that he, he gives guts to the rest of the team, but not himself, is actually a really big positive for me. Because that means the least likely... Like, these two are no longer that likely to die in that turn, and he's more likely to die. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. he's safer to cycle. Uh, yeah, and yeah I, I like that a lot. I wish Shufu's MP heal was AoE. Bro, you want Medea Lily to die? <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> Dude. Oh, that, that's... I mean, that's like half of... Uh, the original Merlin. I almost, I almost said Proto Merlin because, like, Prototype Merlin. But wait, no. Prototype Merlin is already a thing. Yeah, Pro... pro Merlin Babylonia. Is, is a woman. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, of course, uh, we can also we can always go with the uh, unreliable Habitrot, who I can actually find this time because I remember where she is. Um, uh, because female woman. Uh, so I feel like the the best lesson we've learned today is just woman Habitrot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you're using a woman. We got we got a a small person for them. Uh, yeah. So with with Jufu, I basically always go with scope or super scope. Uh, in my case, uh, so I go with the HP one, uh, of course, instead of that one. I, yeah, I'm just flexing right now. Uh, I prefer HP on her over attack but like it's just getting that first NP off is really big for her um, mm -hmm. like you'll you'll have 20 stars for the next mm -hmm. five turns 
Yeah, and like if you have to sit there and build that NP for three turns, then that's not that good. And like, what what are you going to use in place of that, anyways? Uh, like, what other supportive craft essence would you use? Twenty thirty. Bunch. Mm, <laughs> okay. No. She is twenty. She is like twenty forty herself. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Because like, if you use this, okay, then you. Sp so you get less stars now, and then after a few turns, she might get her MP, and then you get 30 per turn. But the thing is, we're using a quick servant. We're going to be overflowing on stars anyways. Like, uh, with Suzuka, I'm going to be seeing, like, turns with 20 or 30 stars. I'm not going to see, like, 50 plus. She's not that kind of a quick servant. Uh, but, like, the plus 20 is enough. Uh, and, like, you use this, it's instantly to 20, 2030s. Uh, so, uh, but then, like, what's the other one? Uh, Camlon. Why, why would I expect her to die? I, I would not expect her to die that quickly. Uh, and Camlon's good for servants that you know are going to die fast, because it doesn't do anything unless they die. But if she's going to sit out there using her MP back to back, uh, she's not going to die for a long time, which means she effectively mm. not have a craft essence. Uh, yeah. But Matahari, it makes sense with Matahari. With Matahari, uh, like, she's purely offensive buffing. There's a little bit of debilitation there, though. She has a little bit of potential with that because she has 60% chance of charming all male enemies. And that's pretty unreliable, but if there are some situations where I'm up against like multiple male enemies, and I can just, I'll just throw this onto there, uh, because her craft essence rarely matters that much, anyways. Uh, but she, she'll, uh, this increases your debuff success by 15%, so it's 75% chance of charming instead. Uh, and then also. She has a chance of getting her NP because it's 50%, so 60%. She has good NP gain that works great with Mighty Chains because she has a quick deck. Um, and if you get an NP off with her, that's an AoE charm that's very likely to happen because that's actually... Uh, wait, hold on. That's It's 95% chance to charm her. So, uh, it, it's probably not going to do anything because she dies in two hits, but... It might do something. Uh, alternatively, could go with the Star Bomb, something like that, because uh, she is crit support, and that would make sense because I don't have a. Well, actually, I do have immediate stars. Yeah, I forgot she has a 15 Star Bomb on one of her skills. But yeah, just the the question is answered here. Like the the one that's most likely to die is. Matahari. Uh, so she dies out. Uh, they took a bit of chip damage, but uh, but Asclepius is able to heal that, and then we're do we're dealing with that first NP. So with him, uh, if you have his second pinned, this is just such a good craft essence for him because it helps him stabilize. It's six thousand health from regen instead of three thousand. Um, but if you don't have a second of pin, you're probably going to want to pick K-Scope or something like that, just to mm. make sure he has his MP when you need it. Because he might not want to immediately MP, but the sooner you have it, the better. Yep. Yeah, then that happens. You can... Uh, he dies off from the AoE NP, and then he comes in. And this is actually... Actually, I'll switch out Paracelsus because of this, because uh, if he dies and she still has his guts, that's going to conflict with her guts. And I don't want to have that happen, so... Uh, so with him, I would rather have... I don't know, I could use something more utility-based like Fuma. Because Fuma is... Uh, he's a debuffer, he does have that targetable evade which I do like um, he has attack down crit rate down 
So that's a little bit of a uh, little bit of offensive er, offensive debuffing. Offensive debuffs. Yeah. 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 yeah that, I actually that term that term is kind of uh kind of twofold now because we have offensive Funnily debuffers enough, here. And then I think I cut that out of my script debuff. when I was talking about Kenshin. Cause like I was like because removing offensive buffs is a defensive action and vice versa. But like, you know, you get very tongue twisted when you do that. Yeah. 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 It's, uh... Yeah. Uh, so he also has like this buff block, which there's a lot of situations where that can be pretty handy. Um, the debuff resist is kind of wasted on him. Um uh, it, it's wasted on Suzuka, that is, because she doesn't have any debuffs. And then, then like, the defense down, that's alright. With Fuma, I never have to worry about the NP. He's, uh, it's something kind of nice about him. He just, uh, you just throw out a, uh, any sort of craft essence. I'll usually go with, like, 2030, because I'm not sure what to do with him. Like, Maybe Camelon makes some sense. Maybe 2030. I don't really want him to live that long usually because his entire purpose is just making... It's just evading one person, basically. I use him for Gaetia solos. Cheat. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> use him in the front. <laughs> wow, line. we even used the same account for it. <laughs> oh, you're right. Yeah, never mind. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Uh, Plushie was nice enough to let me... Borrow his Gadia account um, when I was doing my Ibuki video, which is yeah, I mean, which that took sixty eight tries. <laughs> that was fun. We, we gotta look out after each other when um when they don't give us a uh, story replay, right? Yeah, yeah. I'll let you use my Gadia account when I have one. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I mean, I don't need Gadia. I need oh, what fight do I want? Hmm. I don't know what fight I want. I have so many accounts for like almost every fight. Uh, do you want the is... the second Gawain fight? Because <laughs> I I actually do. Oh, have that. I I do kind of want Gawain's fight. I mean, I don't um, know who I can do it with though. Like it's kind of free with any archer. I think I solo with Koi and Dark as well. Like it's actually not that hard. Like Gawain is legit. Yeah, the, kind the, of the fell second. Off, bruh. Yeah, the second. Uh, boss fight is like the hardest one of the three of them because the the last one because the first one you don't have to kill him entirely and he has like 70 percent reduction and the last second one he has one, like no reduction yeah he has like 30 percent uh he does have more hp because i think he has like i want to say it's over four hundred thousand. uh Good, but I don't, I don't the know. second one is like 50 percent reduction and he has uh 400 uh 300 and something thousand i don't know I was uh I was messing around with uh some different servants for that. It's that's a fun fight to try to solo. Yeah. Oh, who was I using? Uh, ah man, uh, if he was a caster, uh, Steno could have soloed it. But... Oh yeah, for um, if you just MP loop. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Uriel can do it. It's kind of like a similar con. Well, it's not really a sim similar concept. Uriel's like taking huge chunks off her, uh, his HP whenever she's, she MPs as well. Yeah, she's uh, she's counterclassing too, so she can actually survive a, an NP to the face. Oh, yeah. That's something that Sthenos struggles with. She can keep him locked down for like three turns uh, straight, yeah. like three or four turns straight, but yeah. she can only do that like twice because you only have one in Vuln. Uh, and I don't have one George's the... Bonsi either. <laughs> that is not an oh. option. One of the most funs I've had with the, with the Camelot fights was to make the fairies fight their um, actual real versions. And I think Barguest versus Gawain was the hardest one. I did actually kind of struggle. I did have to retry multiple times. The other ones are just really free. I don't... Yeah. Anyways. Man, I I'm still waiting for that... Fairy Knight Brita Mart versus Brita Mart <laughs> solo. True, that's a that's a brilliant idea for a solo. 
Why have I never thought about that? Fairy Knight Brittlemore versus Brit. <laughs> Man. Amazing. Lacking. Lacking the content here. Uh. Okay. So I think I went over, like, all of these. Uh. Building for quick servants is just a little. Uh. A little complicated with that type of thing. Of course, you can also. Uh. Man, I actually kind of regret that. Uh. I. I always go for, I always try to go for like closer approximates for low rarity, but I, I, I do have to uh, remind myself that this is an option. <laughs> this is something you can do here. Uh, so bring Scotty, uh, because like if you're using Suzuka, like if you have your own Suzuka, you're probably better off bringing someone else's Scotty to support her. Because that's going to help her spam more. Uh, although I still do really like the idea of uh, using Jufu. Because that's going to help her spam easier. Because uh, unlike some quick servants, like um, like for example, Saber uh, Okita Saber Altar, um, she isn't very NP refund centric. Uh, like mm. there's a lot of quick servants that can be really heavy on refund. Daikokuten is another and uh, another uh, example of refunding servants, but mm -hmm. she's just card looping type of person. It's her arts mm -hmm. cards that just do so much. But the bigger question is, is Okita Alter Saber... Oh, fuck, I said it right. Because you said Okita Saber Alter. I was gonna say, it's Okita Saber Alter. Okita or Saber Alter? It's not funny. I'm, I'm gonna... I'm, just, I'm, I'm so upset with myself. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. Hmm. Okay. So. Last up, we've got like okay, art servant go. Hey, we art, art servant. servant. Um, Durga. Yeah. Yeah, I passed it right when I said, "Oh, oh he's gonna, he's gonna pick Durga." Okay. Yeah, so. we're gonna pick Durga. So, Durga is an AoE art servant, and we gotta look at, like, what does she have going on here? So, she's got a big battery. Uh, she's got three time, three turn invuln. Those are the types of things I'm looking for. And yeah, she also has. Isn't that overcharge for the team? One time, three turns? Yeah. Or is that, or is, okay. It's for the team, yeah. It is indeed for the team. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um. It, it, Works with uh, Tonalico a little bit. I, I do use that team for farming, but yeah. I see. And then she also has this uh, this school this skill, which I think is cool, but it's got it's sort of Muramasa syndrome here, uh, <laughs> where it's three turns of NP damage up. Uh, it forces all her cards to be arts for a turn, and then there's also Pierce Envil for a, a turn, and. That, that's the problem. You only get one turn of the Pierce Emblem. Uh, which yeah. is a problem with Muramasa as well. Uh, so, that's... It, yeah. It's annoying. Uh, you don't always near, need Pierce Emblem, but... Uh, but when it does come up, that, that is kind of annoying that you have to work around that. Definitely. Like, it, it, it bugs me to no end. To be honest. Like, that one thing is just... I know it's docking too much points over something that doesn't seem major, but it's... Ugh. When it happens, it happens, you know? Yeah. 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 Uh, and the fact that it, it's tied to an NP damage buff, that means you're going to have multiple times you might want to cast it. Uh, so having different durations is always really annoying with that. So if it was three turns for... All those effects, I don't, I don't think there'd be any problem with that. Although the arts cards thing might be a bit weird, but honestly, like from what little I've used her, I don't want to use her quick cards or her buster card. Like her arts card gains are already really low. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, why even bother with the other two, the other three? Her arts cards suck, bro. Her arts card is like one of the worst in the game. It's like Ibuki Syndrome, isn't I it, guess, but... Isn't it a 1.2? Uh, 
Right, yes. Like a one point two. Uh, yeah. Well, see, the worst ones in the game are like one or below. Well, uh, yeah, like she, well, she has summer like, Valks, That's it. Uh, also, Duryodhana literally came out on the same banner. <laughs> oh, Duryodhana. Well, I, I, I got like, I got lore accurate amounts of him. You know, he has like a hundred brothers. I, I think I got like almost a hundred of him. Ah, uh, I, I see. And uh, there's also Carrie. There's um, Ron Maru. Oh, Ron Maru, true. Yeah, I don't. I, uh, I had it all in my brain, like which one has, which ones had the worst to the best out of the like bottom five. But uh, then someone corrected me on something. Now I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Gets corrected once, fucking dies. Uh, also her NP, there, there's only, so with this, it's just, she has two things here, it's demonic and sky, but there is another thing to this NP beyond it's just refund that I do think could be fun to work with. And that one, um, to take advantage of that, uh, we would need either... Matahari or Kazgil. I think Kazgil would actually be better for it because he has uh, more arts centric supportability. Uh, it's on the right side. Yeah. Look, guys, I, I've been doing this shit for years and I am not even sh signing, showing signs of stopping doing bad at this. Here he is. And what I'm talking about is her NP hits like eight times AoE. Yep. So if you're up against three enemies, 100% star gen, that's going to get you like at least 30 stars. It should have been 10. Lore Ten accurate wise, it should have been 10 hits. Yeah. It's a. Uh... I don't know why it's only eight. Unfortunate. Yeah. Not enough hands. But yeah, like. Yeah, eight um, hits AOE, pretty nice. Yeah. So, now I think this is... Hmm. Should we go ahead and talk? Okay. Uh, we'll just have him as the third slot here. Um, we're going to build it a bit differently, though, because these are art servants, and uh, and most of the servants we've been talking about are Quake or Buster, which uh, you have to build towards, like, crit base teams with them and although there is going to be some critical aspect to this it's still we're still depending more so on arts uh looping loopability stuff yeah. uh so yeah. with art supports of course we got castoria i can throw castoria on any of these teams and she's going to do great yeah. so i'm not going to bother with her um i could go with jufu but the problem with this is uh, i I don't know if I really want Kazgil to be the first one to die, because she's going to live long, and then she's got the 3 time 3 turn in bone. So, I mean, Shufu can eat a bad crit and just, like, explode. Yeah, but she's... Um, she has yeah. 4,000 less HP. Like, it, okay. it's honestly... It's okay. possible she just, like... Okay. Part of it is because I like having Shufu live a long time. That's because... Her NP, it lasts five turns, so like 20 stars for five turns, that's really nice. And then I also don't always want to use the battery immediately. Sometimes I'll go like four or five turns without using the battery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, and she does have crit rate down, that's true. Yeah, so I would prefer to have her in the third slot over him, uh, but I, I'm... I can go with something else. Like, there's other options that can do similar things uh, for that. So I'll just keep her back there, there for now. I could go with something like Mozart. Uh, I don't think I'd start with Mozart. Because uh, I'm not... I don't know. I'm not a huge fan of, uh, of using Mozart on an AoE servant, I guess. Why, though? Oh, the debuff, the debuff being single target or something, but like... Uh, it's more so because if I'm going with an AoE art servant, 
uh, I want to take advantage of refund. Uh, so I'm better off with that, because that means she's going to get more NP gain from that. And if you're yeah, taking right. advantage of refund, you're going to want three turn buffs. Yeah, like the, the thing with Art Servant is just like crit damage with cards. It's just not that valuable, you know, like it's yeah. it's just less than Buster and it's not meant to do damage. It's supposed to give you more MP back. So if you can't have a support that literally just allows you to get more MP back from the MP itself, then you probably take that one instead. Yep. Simple logic. All right. So, yeah. So, yeah, I'd go with uh, something like this. I could actually, alternatively, I could go with, uh, um, with her. Although, it's regrettable that he is a guy, so it's a no from her, but uh, she will buff her a bit. And it's like yeah. arts, NP gain, and then she's also got the guaranteed start for one turn. She's an archer, so she's going to take the stars, so uh, she could get you started a bit. Uh, and her HP is notably lower than the other two, so she's probably more likely to die. Um, uh, especially since you're probably going to be using her against a saber. Uh, so yeah. she'll definitely die then. Uh, if not... Oh. I do kind of like putting a taunt CE on her, uh, but again, taunt CEs add a, a whole new dynamic to this, and it gets rid of some of the randomness, but uh, there's still randomness to it, unless you run taunt CEs on everyone, then, uh, then it's not going to be as random, because you'll know when everyone dies. Um, yeah. Another... Hmm. Who else would I run with her? I guess we could also go with him because I don't. We do have some anti chip with his defense buff and her own invuln, uh, but we might want to have him come in later to just help them stabilize a bit. Uh, you know who I'd run with her though? Habitrot. Steno. Oh. Steno? Yeah, because she's a god. I mean, it's not that valuable, to be honest. Uh, unless you're fighting against a male. I think if you're fighting against a male, you're using a divine. You're always bringing Steno. Uh, yeah. yeah, I'm... Uh, I mean, if we're up against a, a, a male, that does make sense. But with Steno, I prefer to have her in the third slot. Because her NP... Uh, if you're up against a male, her NP is going to do stuff, like, all the time. Because every time you NP, you're just killing an entire turn of attacks and yeah, uh and, just buff removal, and she gets her mp really easy um yeah. depending on how many enemies are fighting if you're fighting against one one male i mean it's less it's not very likely because you're using durga it's an aoe but like you know yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Um, i mean I, there are some situations i would use her uh like if there was some sort of invuln that I didn't know how to deal with, I might consider that, but I, I wouldn't use Steno here in particular. Um, that being said, a bit low on art supports here. Oh, right. Right. Mozart. Uh, yeah, Mo uh, Mozart's pretty nice for, like... Um, he's nice for trying to get that one loop. He's also uh, sort of a bursty type of support, and, like, I, I don't think her... Uh, her NP damage is going to be that valuable, though, so... It, it, yeah. I mean, okay, the, the thing is, realistically... Realistically, I'm, I'm not saying... Realistic, unless you really don't have Castoria, like... And, um... And, um... What, how do you put this? Like, and, and you're borrowing an AoE arts, like, 120 from, from a friend. I, I really think, like, whoever builds better with Castoria would just fit better, because, like, you will always yeah. bring Castoria, like realistically, right? So like, so like, if you need anyone with like with their MP with great function, then you can consider Castoria's spread charge to make it a lot more accessible. Uh, for example, right? So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, uh, it's just the thing with um, the thing with Castoria, and I I know people are probably going to be playing with Castoria regardless. It's just she makes it 
so simple, dude. Like, yeah. Uh, like you can you can do this. This is probably gonna just this front line is probably gonna get you through the entire fight. Yeah, that that that's why you run arts. Yeah, uh, that's why you run art. It's stupid. Cancer is just too broken. Like, and at that point in time, why even bring, bring Durga? You can bring anyone. Yeah, sorry. Like, Castoria is just any arts. The Ptolemy. And Ptolemy is a bit awkward, though. I, I I do think Force Transformation is kind of annoying for his go for his go three. But the uh, I like yeah, her NP gain me. more. Like, the I know Ptolemy... her, her NP gain is a bit annoying, but. Um... Yeah, I'm talking about Durga, that is. Yeah, um, yeah. But she at least has a reasonable amount of arts cards. Uh, she can have up to five. Whereas he's stuck with that, That's a two. bit more than reasonable. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, he's stuck with only two. He's only got two arts cards, and they're, like, on par, I think. Uh, although he does have the NP gain buff from this skill. He refunds better, but he um his cards are worse. Uh no, his cards aren't worse either. But like the the thing with him is just his third skill's dead. He has two skills. Unless you wanna waste five turns in Buster Mode. Which is honestly not a hard thing to do if you have Castoria, because anyone anyone can use Castoria. Uh but yeah. Yeah, I guess it I guess um you can do that while you have downtime on her on her third skill uh, I don't know uh, I, I don't really uh, haven't really used him beyond the that one video I made where I where I had him use his third skill twice in one turn and it's the fountain of youth and, and it was yeah, it was funny. made by summer <laughs> Uh, anyways um, okay so we're just talking about that. Oh fuck, man! We, I, I really fucked it up by throwing Castoria in here. <laughs> oh no! Like, okay. Uh, okay. Here's the thing with like like low star support team. Like the the realistic, you know, version of it is always gonna have Castoria. Even in the Buster comp, the realistic version sometimes is gonna have Castoria over like Koi and Light. Right, like I, I mean, at that point, why would you run a Buster? But like, you know, it the character is just dumb. Like the cat, the 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 character was a fucking mistake. Like, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, just too overtuned. Um, but you know what? If we're going to build a team around Castoria, we can, uh, we can, we can do a little bit of, of that. There are some things that you would want to value with that, and like it's not always going to be just enough that you do one thing. It, this isn't always going to be enough. Uh, like I did something like this with the um, with the elderly uh, uh, that that super recollection Elder. quest. Elderly. What? Elderly Lee. Oh, old. oh, Lee Shu! Oh my God, elderly. <laughs> yeah, I, I, like, I know why no joke? one uses that pun, but uh, the elderly. Well, he do be the elderly though. Okay, uh, so at that point, I can't win really fast, so I have to, uh, I have to plan around more than just like three turn with castoria uh like because with castoria you can win faster uh but you also have to be mindful of like longer fights uh, where she can't make you win faster and you might not have tamamo or proto merlin so well that's that's your problem for not picking her jokes on you should have picked tamamo guys look you should have picked top yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So, so, uh, so with Castoria, we know like, yeah, like, this is great with her because it's double stacker. Like, anything that helps her use her NP more or at higher NP 
overcharge levels is going to be great. So, um, do I have, do I not have that one? Uh, the Amalgus Oh, yeah. Seven. You can overcharge it. Those work with Durga. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this, this one. This is really good with her because it's just three times you get two extra stacks with the, with the overcharge. Yeah. Uh, I like, like this is genuinely a great one. Yeah. So, with someone like Hans, uh, I'm not sure what craft essence I would give him. Uh, I'd just give him overcharge as well. I don't know. Uh, I, like I, I, I don't know about that. Um, I, I, I don't really f like bank on him s sticking for very many turns. Like, I, I even throw the star per turn on Durga or Castoria. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's himself, that's usually right? what people do, because it's got the MP charge as well. Um, I guess yeah. I could go with that, just so we crit more and we uh, get our MP more often. But he's very, very much likely the first to die. Uh, so, after that, I don't think I'd run Paracelsus. I think he doesn't offer enough. Uh, options. You can also use someone like Jufu, who helps her NP more often. Uh, and but like again, she's more survival than Queen of Sheba, for example. Uh, but you can also use someone like him to help stabilize because uh, a lot of the like like let's say these three are out on the field, then she dies. Okay, well. You might have gone down a bit on HP because she doesn't really do much healing. She has, does 2k every 5 turns. So you can have him come in next and help heal them up. Uh, I wouldn't use Mozart though because Mozart... Because if, if we have to bank on... If we have to build around this team not winning fast, I feel like Mozart's just not a good pick. Um, in which case... In some situations, I feel like even George might be useful, but uh, George is usually useful if it might take three turns for you to recharge your NP, but like between that, these two have good arts cards, and then they have skills that boost their gain, so they might not need all three of those turns, so it might be a bit of a waste. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think at the point when you bring yeah I I Castoria was actually a mistake the, because by the point you bring Castoria there's too many roles that are already filled it's yeah. like I I think the rest of the support literally depends on what fight you're doing um, for example like like if you're fighting against you know for ex a character that force single target MPs on break then you know taunters are good if there's a character that uh you know buff removes you know Shufu can do it uh, is a character that um. You know, I don't know. You, know, you, you just bring counters instead. Like, if the character's, like, demon or divine or undead, you yeah. bring Summer Martha. Right? Like, it, like it, it's... Th that's the good thing about Castoria, is, like, you get more space in terms of, uh, you know, in, in terms of the kind of um, you know, other support that you can do to deal with the event gimmick or, uh, or to make your fight against this specific boss even easier. Right? So... Yeah. What about saving room for a backup DPS? You know, that's a good point. Uh, I forgot to go over that on one of the previous ones. If you don't know what support to go with, you can just throw another DPS in there. Uh, like, yeah. Uh, like, I, I would be throwing in some caster DPS. Uh, I think one of the best backlines is Shimpachi. Yeah. Oh. I oh well. Oh. Yes, <laughs> yeah, best berserker. I genuinely think Shimpachi is one of the best, like universal. I don't know. Yeah. Like, cause if you really think about it, isn't he a little bit better than? Oh, I know what than, you're about uh, to say. Than Herc without Bonsi. Oh. Well, without Bonsi, yeah, but that. Yeah. Uh, that's. I mean, yeah, it's without. That's Bonsi. because. That's because his Bonsi is... Like, like, they have very similar things as far as that goes. It's just... Uh, Herc is built around his Bonsi, and this guy's not. Yeah, her, his like, skill 3 as well. Because yeah, he has like, the one turn evade, and he has the the one time guts, which would be the same yeah. thing as Herc. 
Um, yeah. So if you gave this guy uh, Herc Spawn C, Herc. Uh, then yeah, maybe he uh, maybe he would be better. Also, I, I didn't... mean, Herc's third skill skills a lot though with with his Spawn C. Also, I didn't notice it, uh, but yeah, that's Okuda right there, isn't it? Yeah. They snuck Okita into the FA. Disgusting. Okay, I'm joking. <laughs> Did they sneak her in on this one, too? Okay. Well. Uh, yeah, you can go for a, like, a Berserker in the back line. Like, Buster decks are really nice for cleaning up, so you could use someone like Say. Uh, Guts is usually a strong idea, though, because Guts can... Uh, it, it can guarantee a turn if they're the last servant out there. Yeah, yeah. Anyone would gut like I mean, obviously, you know, pe pe people know who are good solo servants, right? Like, like Tyra, like you know, I like. Okay, <laughs> here's actually here's actually something I want to say, right? Like, I think for example, there are there's a slight difference between last man standing and solo unit, like. I think obviously you know you can bring a good sustain unit for a last man standing, but most of the times you don't need. To. Like for for example, a, a healer, a solo heal heal tank, like Bob, Summer Bob, Smob, she can be last man standing, but like I definitely think, you know, she doesn't have to be. Like like, how do I put this? Like you. Oh, like what usually when you need last man standing what you need is just i'm gonna kill this thing within like two three to four turns or whatever uh and instead of like oh i have to deal with the entire fights gimmick and whatnot so that that's why that's why a lot of people like you know very explosive berserker single targets because oh i don't have to use my brain uh this this guy has like 200 000 hp left Hell i'm just gonna yeah. click cluster for three turns and it's yeah oh well Look, the the thing with that thing though is like, why would you ever not frontline her? Right, like the well, the issue maybe because with because I want her to to support the DPS that is inferior the, to her. The the issue with Ibuki is just like, why would you ever not frontline her? Right, it, it's kind of similar with like like Summer Bob, like like if you want to run her in a team. She can always be a front line. I mean, she can also be a back line, but like she's not even that good of a back line because a lot of times for her solos, you actually want her to get a head start. You want her to get a head start like, um, like for example, um, you know, Habertrot, right? So like Habertrot gives her a very big head start. Uh, she can extend Habertrot's heal per turn by three extra turns. So like it's, it's, um, th there are servants that sort of, even when they're good soloers, they take advantage of the first couple of turns to like warm up and then they sort of get into the zone and then they start soloing and they start like, you know, dismantling the enemy. I think obviously the most polarizing, um, you know, example is King Protea. Like King Protea is the pinnacle of, she can actually solo pretty well in a lot of stuff, but she's a horrible last man standing servant because she needs to ramp up, right? So, I mean, yeah, for example. Dude, I, I just realized something. Um, yeah, it, it's dumb, but you could you could use Smob to increase the duration of Cursed Harm's first skill. What is Cursed Harm first skill again? It's gain stars and then gain stars next turn as well. It's a one turn regen buff. Oh, so now it's gain stars and then gain stars next turn and then gain stars next turn. Yeah, dude, 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 if you, if you went double bitch, uh, you could cast it twice and then in increase it by three turns. <laughs> and now you could have 30 per turn for the next three wow. turns. <laughs> oh no, if only we had something like that, you know, that we've been talking about for the past two hours. Was yeah, Himiko. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, you're right, Himiko as well. I was gonna say Shufu, but yeah. 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 Basically. Like, even even Jason. Like if you wanna use Jason that way, I mean you can. Uh use you Jason gotta get his MP though. Like I I mean I guess you can say the same thing about uh Shufu. Shufu but, but it is Shufu easier to get MP. Better. 
And she has better I mean, aim and also yeah, the battery. It is better to get a little easier to get MP for Shufu. She's also gonna live a bit longer because he has less HP. Yeah, and she heals to full. He doesn't. He has a skill that decreases he has his own defense. Two thousand health on one of his skills. And it'll remove that defense debuff that he puts on himself for no reason. Yep. Good, well, good, good. Are we gonna there. move on to a different type of team build? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I guess we can. Oh, what was, what was I thinking next? How about building high cost teams? Um, yeah, we can get into that. Actually, yeah, I remember now. Uh, so, multi-core building, like, uh, multiple DPSs. So, a big reason why a lot of people, uh, a lot of more popular streamers that you see, won't do specifically crit comps, or at least they'll disavow them a bit, uh, because they're, they're more RNG, is because yeah, they don't know how to make them. <laughs> So yeah. when when you do a crit comp, uh you don't just like bring multiple uh uh let's say like multiple people that can buff your crit damage. You bring multiple people that can buff the entire team's crit damage that can also take advantage of the crit damage. Yeah. Uh some people when they think of a a crit comp, they think of uh where is he? They think of something like, uh, okay, and Hans, Hans would be perfect for this. Like, this is not a good crit comp. Like, you got one servant doing crit damage here. Like, sure, you got a lot of crit buffs going into him, he's gonna crit very reliably. But this isn't how you run a crit comp. A crit comp has to take advantage of multiple servants having buffs. Uh, so, uh, let's see. Who's a good example of it? I, I know Van, Van Gogh is a bit of an extreme example, I'd say. Yeah. Um, but I don't have Domon, so I can't use that. Domon's, like, one of the best ones. Yeah, double Domon. Um, Koyan, Koyan Dark Domon, something else. Like, I guess you could, I, could, I guess Saika like, could work, because she has Team 30. Like, to to sum it up, all right. To sum it up, what people when people are saying crit comps and like crit crit support and whatnot, like when they're talking about that, usually they're referring to Mintern. So like, like oh, you know, like Merlin's a good crit buffer, or like um, you know, non AOE crit boost, like 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 uh, Summer Scotty is a great like crit crit buffer summer scotty oh it's better with buster in fact summer scotty is in fact not better with buster than than quick the only time where you use summer scotty exclusively with buster servants most of the time i mean not always but like a lot of the times where she actually like gets used in buster a lot over like you know merlin and stuff is specifically for min turns because like unless you're cycling your supports you're like killing you're reshuffling your deck every single turn you're not going to be able to hyper focus on doing crit damage with your dps consist uh constantly this is the other problem with super orion why do people love soloing with super orion it's not because he has like one of the best survivals in the game no it's because if you solo with him he gets he gets three buster cards every single turn Right, that's the only reason why people actually like to solo with him is because oh he doesn't he doesn't get he doesn't have to share the the deck space with other two other people. Um, so the, the the good thing with Van Gogh and um, and Dolman is that I mean those are like yeah as Azoto say the most extreme example, but like the good thing with these two units is that your entire fifteen cards are all crit. You don't you don't need to be like oh man I I wish I I sure wish I got this one Orion card this turn and when I don't my entire team just falls apart I got to reset at that point you might as well do a min turn right like yeah yeah uh so this could be a crit comp yeah yeah this is what I came up with um I was just trying to look for like something that fit 
the definition to a T without it being ridiculously uh, strong because because uh, I'm gonna be honest uh, Van Gogh is that to the extreme I mean there's a reason why people don't like crit comps it's just not that easy to build a strong one. like that that's just like MPs MPs is like all right, if you played Yu-Gi-Oh like right if you played Yu-Gi-Oh MPs are like the extra deck like it it exists outside there's no draw RNG from it you can queue it as long as you meet the meet the requirement which basically means um you have your mp gauge at full you can you can draw that card whenever your mp gauge is at full for every other like normal face card it's like it's it's card draw or you're like playing a fucking card game you're hoping you top deck that buster card like it's literally the same as playing a card game you're just trying to top deck that buster card right and if you don't top deck it you just lose sometimes so like you know like th that is why uh, you know crit teams are not easy to build like actual good crit teams like usually aoe crit are are better but yeah i'm just gonna fuck around with this one uh so that's one of the cool things about van gogh and the foreigner class like she makes foreigners into crit teams like you just put her on a team with them and then you, you do you, you crit and it's good crit damage uh so i've had this uh this Finn fight queued up for a while now. Actually, I should probably turn on the volume. Uh, you can you can kind of just do anything with it. It just works. Yeah. Uh, you can like keep chatting about stuff if you want to. Like I'm, I'm just doing this in the background. Oh, I mean, I don't have much else. I mean, I pretty much finished. I mean, like, like okay. the obviously the thing with double go is like I've said this before is like a lot of times you actually cut out the third as a uh, foreigner um because double go allows you to loop your mp more consistently um yeah. if you uh don't have the interference of a third foreigner um so yeah sometimes you actually prefer the yeah that instead so i mean look at that really depend it's a hundred thousand out of nowhere Oh, yeah. this bitch took my stars per turn, man. Nice one. Yeah, so like, Van Gogh is very strong. Um, and double Van Gogh can do the really stupid, like, we trade curses. So like, because both Van Goghs can give uh, your entire team curse. So they like, they, they can trade curses. Um, so both of them actually get the uh, benefit from the battery. Uh, one of them obviously gets it more because one of them gets the extra three curses from the first one's battery. But like it, like Van Gogh is just two Van Goghs flows so well together. But on a, even if you don't have Van Gogh yourself, um, like this, you can just throw them into any foreigner team and it worked pretty well. Um, yeah, there's a reason why Koyan Dark is good because Koyan Dark has both uh Dolman and Van Gogh's energy, so she actually can fit in the most universal kind of crit comp. Um, the unfortunate thing is not neither of them are animal. I, I yeah. think if either Dolman or Van Gogh is, are like animal trade, I mean, they, could give, even, that, they could give Dolman a cat costume. Like, yeah, everyone... Like, JP Twitter already thinks he's a cat. <laughs> the rats think he's a cat in their, in their challenge class. one of his skills? Because one yeah, of his skills is something uh, cat. Torture cat, uh, it, it's something, I, I don't know. Van Gogh like... should have it for her third ascension. Her third ascension is like a pot of sunflowers and a jellyfish. Like jellyfish is barely an animal. Jellyfishing, jellyfishing. It's, it's barely an animal. Oh, but yeah. So like, yeah, crit comps are inherently usually bad. And like what people mean by crit comp is just what they see on Twitter or YouTube. They because... they see one servant. They they build crit comps the same way they build everything else, which is hyper invest your supports into one servant and get disappointed yeah. because they only have five cards when you should yeah. be spreading it out. Like yeah. oh my god, dude! She just did seven hundred thousand. Oh, None yeah, of these servants are yeah. grailed. Like, 
Yeah, this is this is actually kind of a difficult quest for that. Like you can't just randomly throw shit at it and it works. Like that one that yeah. one punishes you if you don't uh invest in good consistent damage, basically. Van Gogh's crypt is too strong. Like with foreigners, like one of the reasons why I don't run double Van Gogh with Koyan Dark, or I actually Sometimes I don't even run Dome on Van Gogh with Koyan Dark, is because Van Gogh can use her MP like like very easily, like at least back to back, and that's that's almost crit cap. That's yeah. like my Van Gogh's MP two, so it's 175, so it's 350, 350 plus Koyan Dark's own crit up, it's 400 percent, it's a hundred percent away from crit cap. You you bring like any Merlin, it's cap. You bring like Summer Scotty, it's cap. You bring Dolman, it's cap. Like anything would just make it cap. Like it's just, it, it's too yeah, much. It's a lot of cap. It's too much. Yeah, it's it's, not, it's too much. Like Van Gogh buffs. Van Gogh is such a good crit support that, like in min turns, people use MP5 Van Gogh for anyone who has two buster. Yeah. That is actually a lie. They they use Van Gogh with the uh, ruler Jean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like anyone with a Buster card, which uh, <laughs> is everyone. So yeah, I mean, Van Gogh's definitely like I think this is the strongest they can make a crit servant. Like I, I, I don't think they can make a like crit support that is as strong as her because she also buffs herself. Like a, the crit servant is so good to the point where herself is like a main DPS. Just yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's kind of crit servants and how foreigners have kind of perfected the crit, uh, the crit system. Now there's some except for Kuku Khan. Ha <laughs> ha! Jokes on you, Kuku Khan. Yeah, yeah. Jokes on you. Uh, fucking go away. <laughs> Kuku Khan can actually play can can play a double Kuku. Double yeah. Cuckoo is a real kind of a real team. It's fun. Yeah, you can uh, you can do yeah, something like. Uh... Yeah, Nognaria is actually like no. By the way, like Nognaria just does not have this. You you have to let it go. Nognaria is is a support. <laughs> yeah. Double Van Gogh and Ren Mario. Uh, as I've found, Van Gogh trying to support non five star. Uh, existence outside the domains it, it's not that great um yeah like I've, yeah because I, I i've tried making her work with uh what's her name uh jet okuda and oh, jet okuda. yeah her stats are just too low for it to i mean her deck is also an issue right like yeah quick deck yeah it's yeah it's just not that great uh i've done a good few videos with double ibuki uh like double ibuki that lets you uh like it works past the disadvantage of her first skill being tied to three times three turns because you're you're basically making it six times three turns because you got two of them doing buster cards and you can only pick nine cards so it's so you're more likely to get something valuable out of it you can just Hard focus on picking the red cards instead. Uh, they don't. The two of them don't quite uh, offer much to each other, other than Buster resist down from the NP. Uh, but if you have two Ibukis out there, that means you have potential for two separate sources of damage. Uh, another setup that I've done a lot that is fairly similar is double shooting and. Uh, I can't have both of them on the... Uh, I can't have two of them on the same team, so I'll just show the caster one. Uh, but Double Assassin. Uh, they both give team buffs, and they do team debuffs, and they're able to do some debilita debilitation, which is more likely because they have uh, the debuff resist down that they put on the enemy. And, yeah, it, they they support each other like individually like one is not really that big of a support for the other 
but the fact that the two of them are doing more damage uh, and they're both doing damage. That can be really nice for like bar breaks because uh, sometimes you don't need both NPs to break a bar uh, and you don't have, you can't reliably loop for whatever reason. Uh, and that means you have another NP in your pocket for the next bar. Uh, so you can sort of keep that that damage going, even though uh, even though they're not looping the same way. Uh, I've, I've done that for a couple different challenge quests. It's usually just like the big AOE ones where you have to deal with a lot of different enemies that cycle in, uh, because yeah, I, I just like that setup. Honestly, I think like. For a lot of challenge quests, people also forget the fact that, you know, class stacking is just so, so effective yeah. against certain bosses. Like, FGO has one of those most broken, like, class advantage systems because it goes both ways. Like, you effectively have double HP and then you have double damage if you have class advantage. Like, that is just, like, better than, sometimes it's worth better than a buff. Right, like it, it, it's so much extra damage you can do, and like you don't have to worry about any of them actually dying, uh, in particular, because one, they all have counter class, so it's not like they're gonna die from like a normal hit. They probably can only die from MPs. And two, if one of them die, all your other things still do like a lot of damage to the boss. So, like cl class stacking is a very good sort of thing as well. Um, a, a lot of characters with uh, like you know team support, like like Ozzy. Like, Ozzy with, like, some random riders thrown together, that'll probably kill most caster bosses for free, for example, right? So, like... Yeah, so, like, class stacking is a, is a very easy thing to do. And then, obviously, because Draco, you can also do Draco stacking, I guess, but, um... Depends on the, depends on the level. Um, if it's if it's easier, you can definitely do double Draco. Like double Draco can function very similarly to double any like like double Ibuki or something. You know, like triple Buster decks. It's just that their MP doesn't match their that color. Kind of fortunate. Um, Dude, I, I want to I want to use double Summer Ibuki. I, I should try doing that, but I don't think I, I don't think I have access to anything that'll live long enough for that to shine. What do you mean? You mean the third member? Um, no, the the enemy. <laughs> oh. Oh yeah, they might die too fast. Yeah, because you have one one twenty. The other one, it's not. I assume the other one is not one twenty, but. Yeah, I I could probably find one that's one twenty on my my friends list. Yeah, so like class stacking is also an easy thing. Like the the thing with challenge quests is that. There's so many ways to do it. Like you, 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 you can be boring. You can do double Castoria arts DPS, right? But like, like generally, the game has a lot more freedom for you to, you know, to use whoever you like, uh, as opposed to what a lot of people might lead you to believe with their videos and stuff. And you can't really blame them because the thing with, like, for example, we've been talking for, for, for uh, talking about this for three hours. Right? Like, it's not easy, like, there's no, like, you know, clean-cut answer for any of this. But it, it's all for you to experiment and, and whatnot. And, like, you know, obviously, your know, farming comps are a lot more linear and stuff. Um, but, um, like, if you're doing challenge quests, it's, it's really easy to come up with your own, like, cool comps. Comps that you enjoy, uh, which is important for your personal gameplay experience, right? So, yeah. How to build a team after you've watched this stream you've learned the fundamentals you can go ahead and just put your favorites in a team and you just have to yeah. know how they work together right so yeah. yeah anyways as i say that i do min turns and like it's just the same co okay I'm, I, uh but like jeez oh, yeah like i guess we can talk a little bit about min turns but like there's not that much to talk about min turns like a lot of the a lot of, a yeah. big part about min turn comps is countering the the gimmick right yeah. uh, a big part like like do, do you bring santa martha for anti-divine for more damage do you bring homes for uh ignore defense do you bring um what's her face 
Calamity Jane, right? Do 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 bring Calamity Jane for um you know involve peers, right? So like most mo the the biggest part about um min turn team comps is just how much more damage you can squeeze out of your DPS after you've brought all of these um gimmick counter supports. That's why Santa Gale is such a good unit for min turns because Santa Gale, on top of being a gimmick counter, is a huge damage buffer. Like both. Crit up, attack up, and MP damage. It buffs all three types of damage. Um, so, like, yeah. That's also why, like, Holmes is, like, if there's a ignore defense quest, like, Holmes works very well with arts, because uh, he also buffs arts, like, arts down on enemies and whatnot. So, it, it's, a lot of the things are situational. Like, team build in this game is not as linear as a lot of people might lead you. Like, uh, most of the time, you're actually trying to counter uh, gimmicks and whatnot so yeah santa nightingale being permanent is a huge is it really a huge addition though like yeah buff removal resist is very important but like it's not uh, a lot i of, wouldn't actually a lot of buff removal like... gimmicks um i don't want to say ignored but they can be played around uh not yeah. having buff removal resistance uh, because that's... the game doesn't want to force it on you. It's kind of an annoying gimmick. Like, I think Lesengle knows. They, they're not going to design a uh, a gimmick where it's only... You can only use a negate, basically. Like, like there's always... There's usually two ways to, to... There's always, not usually. There's always two ways to go about a gimmick. You use a negate or you play around it. Because they would never design a gimmick where it's like, if you don't have Invo Pierce, you can't win. Right? Like, I, I, I refuse to believe that they'll make a boss fight that is just involve for 200 turns on removal like that would never be a gimmick in a boss fight it will always have it will always have a catch like the closest thing that came to it was saber ibuki but even then you could still like yeah it's very card rng dependent wait but, like, wait are you talking about uh, invul in every turn yeah yeah they, they did that in lost belt 7 no, it's one time. No, it, it was three times uh, one turn. Oh. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty nasty, but, like, at that point in time, you're expected to have Invuln Pierce craft essences. Well, or yeah, they are free of... in the shop. That kind of sucks. I don't like that. I think that's a horrible boss yeah, fight. Yeah, that was a rough boss fight. Uh, well, the, the reason why I didn't notice is because... I always use Tyra. I always use Tyra. It's removable, right? Yeah. Yeah, if it wasn't yeah, well, removable, that would Okay, yeah, let's just extra attack I, this I thing was, to death. I always use Tyra with a uh, Honey Lake, so I didn't even need to use my MP. But like but the the thing is like I, I don't think they should design a boss like I, yeah. I genuinely think Uh no, it has not been put in the shop. The 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 Tomomo C CC, it has not been put in the shop, which is the, the better. But, yeah, it's... They have to... I don't think they should just put it in the... Okay. I do think they should put it in the shop, but I don't think it should be one of those ones that people can double up on, like the mirror. Because that would be I a bit too much. Dude, I want it to be too Dude, you could turn that... You could turn heals into double that heal. You can... Yes. You can take the the Jean code, and you can make that a whole three K heal every three yes. turns. Yes, that's yes. That, no, dude, that's too much. And yeah, no. And then then I wouldn't be catching up because I don't have it. Uh, I I wouldn't be catching up. You guys, oh, everyone true. would be moving forward. <laughs> I'd, I'd be stuck with what you guys have right now, and then you guys would be better off than me still. <laughs> What's wrong with that? No, I'm joking. Man. And <laughs> <Man. laughs> I hate it here. Uh, 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 uh. Ooh, yeah. But yeah, um But yeah. Uh, I I think I think yeah. There's definitely CC that they shouldn't allow you to double up on, 
that is probably the biggest offender. I don't I don't even think if they allow you to double up on the Merlin CC, it'll be that broken. Because it's not every turn. Like uh, for yeah, that one's the, the thing broken. that breaks yeah. the, the thing that breaks breaks CCs in solo uh, is like mostly in solos because you can because like CCs are inherently designed to be triggered once every three turns because of card because of how the deck works but because if you're soloing you get a bonus from just oh i i don't i don't actually have to um you know i i don't have to wait for the card to come back because it comes back every turn but like that's what's fun about it like for example um the ignore you know anti-stun cc is a very good counter for gimmicks it's, it's like you can save a you know ig you know in uh how do you call that you can save a um a debuff immune or debuff removal effect, yeah, right? You can make like, Frankenstein in a normal Berserker. <laughs> yeah. If, if, but if you're doing solos, it's literally like they can never charm you. If, if there's a boss whose gimmick is like... I, for, I remember like one of the gimmicks of the Beast of Taming, uh, Koi and Skaya boss. One of her gimmicks was like it's like a terror. And you don't even have to remove it with like Atlas. Or, oh no, it's not removable actually. So like it's unremovable terror, and like you literally just counter it by, you know, just by soloing with the command code. And like all stun, charm, uh, gimmicks or sleep gimmicks are just, it's just gone. It's not existent when you use a solo with with some CCs. So yeah, yeah. it's a. Uh, it, it, I kind of like how CCs break solos though, because you know I like solos. Um, but um, yeah, solos are pretty cool. But, yeah, and solos you don't have to worry about team build. You just ask if you're a woman. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, if you're a it's woman, not fair, man. you just use neighbor trot. If you're not a woman, then you know, tough luck. All right. <laughs> it's, uh, okay. I was just randomly trying to solo this uh, this shit in the background. You know, it's kind of sad. Like, uh, like Raiko finally got the buff that everyone was saying she needed, and then she just got forgotten about immediately. It's weird. I feel like her farming damage should be good. Yeah, it is her farming damage not good? I th think I, I think it is. Um I, I don't think it's better than God Juna's though, because uh because Oh it's God yeah. Juna, so Yeah, it's God Juna. Um but something kinda weird um that the 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 spreadsheet had I think the spreadsheet had it set out uh, to always reflect her bonus damage on all three waves, which is not correct because uh, it, it's inaccurate because you're not her, always going to be hitting it. Yeah, her earth and sky is only servants, whereas the man is uh, not servant focused. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 Tesla. It's a uh, earth sky servant. It's actually a huge difference because if, if it's just Earth, it's so much. If it's Earth plus Sky, period, that's like that's like almost everything. <laughs> like that's so much coverage. Yeah, dude. Yeah, Earth, Land, and Sky. Uh, it's it, it's nice that she has such a wide variety of niches. It's just I, I think she's. Uh, she spent too much time in the in the you know the the that that character is shit area that i think she's gonna stick in that area for a long time uh, as bad far as rep, what the damn. yeah bad rep it's sort of like finn who ironically she's fighting right now she's fighting her way out of this hell um uh and steno <laughs> Although okay. Steno is less uh, obvious. Here's something I don't get though. What does Vlad get out of that? What 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 does what what does Vlad get to escape that? No no no. See, Vlad is slowly sinking back in, and a lot of people aren't 
haven't really realized it yet, which is hilarious. And they pop up in chat sometimes. Uh, I, I just see them in the wild, and they're uh, and, and like when but people Vlad are talking about berserkers. Yeah, like people are talking <laughs> about berserkers, and and then someone's like, "Oh, well, I mean, Vlad's good too, right?" <laughs> and, and I mean, and. He's not bad. <laughs> See, if the comparison, uh, see, usually it's in discussion of someone like uh, Berserker Castoria or Creamhild, uh, and I, I'd, I'd rather use either of them over him. Yeah. Uh, I, I actually went over and I was looking at Castoria Berserker's uh, page last night and just looking at some of the wiki comments there, and uh, people were... Uh, talking about his damage versus Castoria's damage, which is kind of a hilarious thing to compare. Um, Castoria has 70 charge, what do you mean? Yeah, Guys. Guys. yeah, something something NP refund. Uh, Please stop. Yeah, and then also, like, one of them can crit and the other one cannot crit. <laughs> like, I mean, I know... I know Arts crits are not that great and all, but she has two Buster cards with 50% crit and Absorb. So she she can at least do some crit damage. And on top of that, her gains are like five times as good as his. Because he makes stars, but he has no way to take them. Uh, and then his Arts cards... It's like... Uh, if they all have their buffs active, I think his Arts cards are half of hers. And hers... That's not including hers are very likely to crit. <laughs> she makes stars per turn. She makes 10 stars per turn. And then she's got absorbed for three turns. Because, you know, Summer Ibuki was not enough <laughs> to say that Berserkers shouldn't have that. Still there? Yeah. Oh. I'm, I'm looking for a file. Oh, Jesus. Oh, that was a lot more... I'm just doing more damage than I expected. I should have this. Where did the file go? Did I lose a file? Uh-oh. Stinky. I have to edit it again. Oh, I have to edit that again. That sucks, bro. You only use Vlad because you have Vlad? Vlad oh. is cool. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely usable. Um, I don't really think he's fun. I think he has a ton of fucking issues that uh, people are uh, very willing to ignore even now. But, like, hey, if you like him, then uh, more power to you, I guess. I I genuinely think he's a, he's a very cool servant, like, in terms of design and whatnot, and, um... I, I'm glad he got out of the the absolute worst launch servant kind of like he he did have that uh you know he he did kind of have that reputation as like oh one one of the worst fucking launch servants ever um and uh it, it's cool to see servants turn around but yeah, he is getting a bit character much development credit, I think because like. Because, like, his refund is impressive, but it's, it's when you fully commit. Like, it, it, it very much leans on his high hit count. His, his refund being that good is very much leaning on his high hit count. It's not because he has good card gain. It's not because he has good battery. It's not because it has, you know, whatnot. And, like, it very easily falls apart if you're not fully committing. Like, if you're doing multi-core and whatnot, static charge is always going to be better than refund. Right, like for for example, um, Berserker oh, Castoria. Just... Yeah, br yeah, yeah. Br Dude, Berserker Castoria has seventy charge. She can literally sit there and do nothing. She'd have she'd have like you know more charge, right? She it, and also like if you're if you're looking for someone with like eight hits with high MP gain, um, Draco actually has. I mean, if you count Draco's passive thirty per turn, it's but it's more refund than Vlad, right? So like. I mean, Vlad's damage, though, is not also not bad. Like, Draco, when she hits, 
non-servants is really sad. Like, I'll be real. Draco's damage when she hits non-servants is really bad. Like, for farming, you you would actually get pretty disappointed, I say. Uh, if you have, like, MP1 Draco against non-servants, it's, like, very, very low damage. But you then know, again, you know... Uh, sorry. Uh, uh -huh. I think it was last night. For some reason, I, I, it's coming back to me now. I dreamed that that Artoria Caster Berserker had a 10 hit NP, and it was like, why the fuck do people use Vlad? <laughs> oh. Well, no, she she has six, right? Yeah, it's six hits. It's, it, it's like half his refund. Yeah. Her refund's idea. actually bad. Uh, question mark. Yeah, bad. Relatively in exact, bad. In the exact same way that a uh, uh, ruler uh kenshin has bad refund yeah their mp refunds actually close kenshin's just have really good cards and artoria's cards suck the po the podcast fin i don't know i don't no. know where we're going with this it's kind of no. like no no we're just sort of sort of bantering uh yeah i forgot to switch back to the podcast thing just uh, sorry i was just letting you guys uh enjoy seeing my level 116 suzuka I'm very because proud the... of her like, the, the thing with team building is, like, the message we're trying to push with team building is, like, there should be more freedom. There should be more creativity because a lot of things actually work better than you think. And a lot of the meta things don't actually work as well as you, right? So they're always, like, the optimized way to build a team, quote-unquote, uh, dubbed by a lot of people, is also considering optimized situations, especially for boss fights. For boss fights, it doesn't matter if you min turn it, you stall it, or you scramble with your backline guts, you know, necrom. Okay, this kind of matter if you use necromancy. Like, if you're scrambling with like your backline with a coup, like barely hang on with two thousand HP, a, a win's a win, right? So like, yeah, I, I, I mean, yeah. there's, it's not a lot of things that are going to hang you up on this. I mean, honestly, it's not that hard of a game, yeah. ultimately. Um, yeah. That the being hardest, said, like... The hardest part is always three-turn farm. Like, the reason why people think three-turn farming is harder than boss fights is because you're trying to min-turn the farm quest. The farm quest is not harder than the, is not harder than the CQ. But min-turning the farm quest is harder than just clearing the cq like that's that's obvious like what so whoever calls me like ta brain rot you're taing the farming note shut up anyways I, I don't know where i'm going with this um uh, answering someone in chat um uh, where vlad does work uh if you have everything if you have double castoria uh and you have like oberon or some good uh some other charger that you can plug in uh, then you can have him three turn on uh, on like single target challenge quests uh, but that also assumes some other things such as um uh, like are there gonna there's be no any weird gimmicks? gimmick to stop you. Yeah. yeah exactly like there's like, gimmicks that can just stop you in your track yeah buff and... removal um uh, better off with galatea uh, Invuln, better off with Cream Hilled. Divine or Chaotic or anything like that, you're better off with uh, Berserker Castoria. Um, there's, it's just... If you are, if you are of the normal seven class, uh, Draco's better because instead of taking double damage, she takes half. So like, I mean that's not yeah, really a fair yeah, then, thing though, because yeah, like you know yeah. I. Because Berserker can deal with the extra class. So. Yeah. Um, the the problem is Vlad is a big vanilla popsicle. All right. So lots of people don't really care for vanilla. Like it's a sweet treat and all. Um, but like it's not anything to be that like happy about i guess uh, like i'd rather have a strawberry popsicle let's say that um but 
he's there and he will get the thing done. Like he, he will cover your need for a snack, I guess, but it's not going to be an interesting snack or anything. A am I making any sense? I mean, it's a little bit more than that. Cause like, cause like the straw, like imagine it, like if you're locked inside of a cage, the strawberry can open the cage. I don't, uh -oh. man, this is, this is getting a little too meta here. <laughs> Debuff clear every turn. Guess Van Gogh's not gonna. They don't even need to do that. They literally they have anti Van Gogh okay. on every boss fight right now. Okay, like but... almost. Okay, okay, but does the lime flavored popsicle uh, work on steel doors? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, like like the the thing with um. Yeah, I I know he's still good. I'm just saying like, you know. The, the reason why people like him isn't even because he's the best one. It's because he's the most accessible one. Like, most, the most people just happen to have him at, like, MP2 or something. And, like, a lot of people picked him uh, for a SSR ticket when Castoria first came out. Um, because, oh, I don't know who else to pick that is, um, you know, maybe I prefer just... Like, he, he's the most overhyped when, when Castoria first came out. Right? Like he, he's the most hyped. I will, I will, I, okay, I won't say overhyped because that's like that's kind of an attack to his character. So, like, he, he's the most hyped up when Castor first came out. So, a bunch of people picked him, and a bunch of people already have him. So, like, his, his appeal is he's he's accessible, he's like a lot of people. He, he's the he's the people's champion, right? Like, a lot most people have him, right? That, that that's why people like him. See, like, obviously, the funny Summer thing Castoria. Is... The funny thing is, now everyone can have Cream Hill, so... Ah, <laughs> uh, you're right. Yeah. yeah, Cream Hill is, like, the people's wife. Yeah, there you go, that's man, horrible. Man, um, I, can't, I can't wait for them to buff Salome, and somehow she outclasses Vlad. There's no way. There's... no. No. That'd be so and, funny, though, wouldn't it? The thing with Cream Hill is she has a lot of like good things they can use in you know challenge quests, like the taunt we mentioned, right? Taunt. Um, she also has uh, you know, a defensive buff removal before damage, so that deals with some gimmicks. She has two anti traits. She has a big fifty battery, uh, so you can kind of like if you want to, you can use her like Kintoki, kind of maybe a little bit. Um, right, so because because she's a she can instantly MP very easily. So yeah. like Cream Hill has a lot of good things that, that that comes from her. So, and she is four star. So if you don't have Vlad nor Cream Hill, if wait. if you just wait for Cream Hill. Sorry. Um. No, keep going. Like Cream Hill is, Cream Hill is a is a great option. Uh, like like she. She is also pretty accessible now. Uh, if you just roll on one of the four star banners, like yeah, she's story locked and whatnot, but you can you can have her through the ticket like twice, I think already, right? Like if you picked her for both four star tickets, you have MP2, and then you can just pull on one of those uh, single rate up banners for four star. Usually it won't go too bad, right? Like usually, I, I can't guarantee you because like my personal experience with four stars are been pretty horrible, but like usually it's easy, right? Yeah, Vlad has the same ramp. Vlad has the same ramp. Vlad has Artstown. So, Vlad also crap stars on his MP. But it's not easy for him to actually use them. Because he doesn't crap 50 stars. He craps 20 stars. 20 stars is in this awkward range where the Berserker is not going to get anything. Yeah. It's 20, right? Yeah. Yeah. Tw 20 stars with double Castoria is like, he's not going to get a lot of stars. Like, 20 stars is a very awkward number uh, for, like, a Berserker. Yeah, it, it's not enough to, like... And he's not going to make overwhelm. any more than that, really. Because yeah, he has he's not gonna make any bad, more. bad hit counts. Yeah, his face cards are not going to make any stars. So, like, 20... 20, a lot of times, might as well be zero. Like, uh, as sad as it might be. So, Creamhild has anti-chaotic, -cha right? Yeah. And why do they give Castoria anti-chaotic? Because it's dumb. Because Cast it's Castoria. It's Castoria. She has to be broken. Yeah, but she could have been anti-neutral. <laughs> okay, like Castoria has three anti-traits, right? 
Like one of them is not one of them is rare. It's uh, threat to humanity. It's um, it's threat to humanity. It's chaotic. It's divine, right? So like, they made sure to allow her to deal with foreigners. Yeah. Most foreigners are divine threat to humanity, chaotic evil. She has triple anti trait against foreigners, and most of these kinds of anti traits, where the the chaotic and divine one, it's usually chaotic or divine. But she has two, so they add up. So if you're yeah. fighting, like, so if if she's hitting like Abigail Williams, she deals. How many more damage to to her, like as anti trait, like that's so stupid. Like she made sure if there was a like if you MP5 Summer Castoria as your main single target farmer, and they put like Abigail in like the final wave or like in the mid wave, they made sure you could still kill them with her. I don't know why they had to do that, but sure, 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 dude. Can she solo? Abby in, I don't like the last Abby fight in, uh, in Salem. So I don't incredible. know. She Honestly, could. if she could, I wouldn't be that surprised. Because the anti divine and anti chaotic extends to her cards, so it's not just MP. So she can do like MP Q QB, and it's just do a shit ton of damage from from crits. So I wouldn't be surprised. I, I think 120 definitely can solo it. Like 120, I am almost certain like it's doable. If she can with, loop like, every gutsy... turn, then probably. I mean, I mean, if the only way you can't, she wouldn't be able to loop every turn in that boss fight, is if she spams the drain too much. <laughs> and I have had that happen though. Uh, I had a, uh, oh, uh, I had. Summer Murasaki uh, kept getting drained. She could sell that. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, like genuinely, I won't be surprised if uh, if she could solo that. Like it, it def it sounds like a very soloable fight for Summer Castor. It's really stupid, but there you go. Like the only foreigner, like th if they want to stop Summer Castor, they they're gonna have to put Cool Cool Khan because Cool Cool Khan. The, is is like none of those right she's like lawful good and not they, threat to humanity we we yeah. just aren't supposed to we're, we're just supposed to demolish every threat to humanity now aren't we because like how many servants have had anti-threat to humanity now uh, just this year we've had at least three right because we had cuckoo we had yeah. one gina and then we had Artoria. Is Cuckoo threat to humanity? She, yeah. Oh, she has anti threat. I'm stupid. She yeah. Has anti threat. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a good thing. They have. They kind of have to prove themselves to to like to ha to do anti threat to humanity because they're extra class. They better. They better earn their place. Yeah. Good I don't job. think she's divine. Good job, Miss <laughs> Threat to Humanity, uh, Wanjina. You alien person. You were. Yeah, and also Castoria just gives you threat to humanity. Remember that. Like, I feel like most people actually don't remember yeah. that's a thing. Yeah, and then... Castoria skill 3 is anti-threat to humanity. Yeah, that's really easy like, to forget, too. Like, like, like people love to talk about, oh, you know, uh, you know, obviously because man is a lot more, you know, common. It's like, oh, you, if you if you use a buster team, you get a free anti-man. Yeah, well, if, if you use summer, if you use no, Castoria on, like, any arts, yeah, there you go. There shouldn't be too many there threats. There shouldn't be too many humanities. Yeah, but yeah, they're we're they're dying by by the dozen because of all these servants, dude. Most bosses, most bosses, uh, for farming, no, for farming they barely exist. Like that's for sure. There's a, there's not a lot of servants that are threat to humanity. Um, I don't even think Draco is threat to humanity. Well, she's a beast, uh, and they usually don't do that with beasts because beasts have to love humanity yeah. how could you be a threat to humanity if uh if you love them uh so Ooh. hi camazots a nice humanity you have there look she didn't he he, he didn't okay. mean to oh, stop okay. it 
Uh, Alright, uh, let's not get too into that. <laughs> you didn't mean to... You don't understand. Uh... Man, what the fuck are we doing now? Um... Nothing. It's almost 8. To go make dinner. Oh yeah, we have been at it for about 3 hours. What else? Would yeah, I unfortunately, do? this episode... I was not expecting to have kind of a... We have to come up with our own shit episode. Because, like, I was like, oh, you're Gouda, and then immediately Christmas, right? Oh. Yeah. There you go. Well, I'm glad that uh, that Tunguska hasn't started yet, because I do have to get started on Lost Belt 6. I, I, I barely started Lost oh. Belt 6. When is Tunguska? I saw, I saw it got announced. Probably within this next week. Ooh. I'll get a, hopefully I get a lot more views on a video. Talk about Tunguska and talk about the free Nemo JP's getting. All right, that that's speculative there, sir. The, there, there's two camps uh, in JP right now. That it's really funny. Um, there is the there is the Nemo camp and there is the um, Dolman Lily. I think that that's fucking hoping, dude. There's the one. Uh, you see. The the third camp, which is the one that is going to win, is the Columbus Lolly camp. No, I d I did see that camp as well. It's gonna be Nero. And the, I mean, if, if they do like Nemo, um, Noah tie-in, uh, they could do like Draco as the SSR. For some reason, it really feels like they don't want to rerun Draco though. I don't. I don't. They didn't even put her in the the des They didn't put her, put her in the normal GSSR. They only put her in the Destiny order. For some reason. So is this? Oh wow! Going to be... I did not know. Huh? I did not know Pope Joan moans when she gets hit by an MP. What Pope the fuck? Pope Joan moan <laughs> to Post Malone <laughs> on the phone. It's gonna be. It's gonna be one of the Nemos. Like it, it, it's gonna be like not main Nemo. It's gonna be like a woman. I see now. Now people can no longer say, "Oh, plus you only roll for women because you're sexist." Women. No, it's because only women, women, women works with uh, Habitrot. It's a gameplay reason, right? Only role for women because the game player. It's yeah. not because yes. <laughs> it's not because they're hot. It's not because they're women. Yeah. Uh... Constantine. Constantine would never make Pope Joan. Okay. No. It's a pope. Come on. It's a pope that created the ball tickler seat. I don't. I honestly, that's a pretty no, horrible. No, she, that's dis, that's disingenuous. She didn't create it; she caused it. She, yeah, she caused the the ball tickler <laughs> throne. It's her MP, bro. Uh, that's that's weird, dude. Imagine being a. Imagine being. That kind of a pope. I I, I don't know how to contribute to this phrase. Yeah, Pope Joan is. We did not talk about Pope Joan when we talk about team building, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, we could talk about team building with Pope Joan. I mean, I guess she. Uh, I I considered. I don't... Yeah, there was a, like a certain point where I I considered mentioning her, like uh, as an example of like uh, a clueless crit team. Yeah, true. She is such a bait as a crit. Uh, support i've realized yeah yeah because like she doesn't need a her skills are decent enough. yeah the cooldowns suck though the cooldowns are fucking the, the balls I, I i don't think she sucks i i really don't think she sucks but i i think i think she has benny emma syndrome it's like their dps is bad enough and they're they're like oh let's fix it by giving them double anti-trait mps newsflash it doesn't fix it He's even worse on her because it's AoE. So it's not gonna like it's it's hard for her to hit everyone with that anti trait with two anti traits. Is Nero Bright a better DPS or support? 
Uh, I would DPS. I would say that she is more valuable as a DPS than a support. Yeah, in my opinion, I I, I think she's as a support. She kind of I, I I hate that term, but she kind of fell off. Um, it, but she like, she's she was like Jufu before Jufu was Jufu, basically, and now now yeah. we have Jufu. But she has an upgraded MP. She has, well, that's usually enough, actually. <laughs> five star with upgraded MP. Yeah, Most you of know, them are good. There's, there's, a, there's a lot of those single target art sabers that have those, you know. Cool. Upgraded single target MPs. Who? Exactly. The, yeah, exactly. the only one I can think of is, is Lancelot, and no one's using him for MP damage. Uh, like like God, um so yeah Nero Bright hits very hard. She she's she's a, she's a very scary DPS. Like, Paracelsus needs a I, medic. I, Amen, brother. Like, no, they're... the medic also like the medic is also part of the problem. It's it's a Asclepius. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true. The, the medic's part of the fucking issue. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, it's just Lancelot and Nero Bride that have NP upgrades. Yeah, and uh, Nero Bride with that giant sword drop, it's gonna, yeah, it's gonna kill some stuff. Uh, there's just not very many NP upgrades in that area. What about if you really Quake? think about it, Draco is just Nero Bride. A single target art saver. Oh. She's just Nero Bride, but worse. She's Nero so Bride, but, but she has more diversity with her card colors. She's Nero Bride, but she also has... Uh... Red cards. But she's also Nero Bride Archer, and Nero Bride Lancer, and Nero Bride Caster, and Nero Bride Assassin, and Nero Bride... Foreigner for some reason. Well, she's not actually a foreigner because, like, foreigners also do deal with foreigners. Can't. But she does take bonus from foreigners. So that is kind of. She's more foreigner than not. True. She has the. She has the complete same uh, against Berserkers and she's weak to. She's Nero Bride Berserker Ruler. It still sounds less dumb than Caster Artoria Berserk. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> you just wait until we get Caster Artoria Berserker Altar. <laughs> Santa. <laughs> Man. And she's Dude. not going to be a Berserker, so she's going to be Caster Artoria Berserker Santa Altar Saver. Morgan Lily. Dude, that's that was so funny though. Um, it, it's funny how she and Morgan just swapped classes at the same time. Yeah, true. I th that's definitely intentional, right? That has to be intentional. Yeah, it's summertime. <laughs> Mistake. Tonalico. <laughs> Tonalico was a great uh, is a great servant. She is very pay to win though. Um. Yeah. Maybe all future Annie servants would be pay to win. Koi and Dark should have been an Annie servant. What? Her anti her anti oh, earth she should have been have? No, she should have oh, she oh, should have right, been. right, anniversary. Right. Not I was New thinking Year. New Year's. She should have been an Annie servant. So my Koi and Dark can do two hundred percent anti Earth like at OC one. Man, really want the whole world for yourself, huh? Yes, it still do less than cuckoo. Anti Earth. Yeah, I know. Mm. I know it's not fair. A MP damage is probably her weakest link. Like honestly, like 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 realistically, MP damage is probably uh, Koi and Dark's weakest link. Like everything else about her that isn't MP damage is pretty pretty good. 
you know what? I just realized there's something I need to be doing during this. And I can, uh, and I can be doing while we talk. Hold on. I am also doing something, but I don't think it's gonna work. I was trying Traco Minturn the ruler. I don't think it's gonna happen. Oh my god. Dude, it... I was like, but she has two bus turns. She has to ignore defense. Uh, I mean, you got a stronger chance there than. Uh, than. My Suzuka did, because I really tried to get her to... Like, she broke the first bar, but, like, after that, you gotta deal with, like... I, I don't know. I don't know all the gimmicks, honestly. I, I I tried to figure it out from the Atlas page, but sometimes it's just a bit much. Basically, you gotta hit her with MPs to remove the status. And then when she's out of the status, uh, her her entire gimmick disappears with, like, her damage cut, her, like... You know, where, where she, whenever she attacks you, she removes, like, uh, uh no, her attacks, you know, ignoring a invul and sure hit, uh, and evade, sorry. And, like, whenever she attacks, she gain a charge. Like, all that gimmick would disappear if she, if you deplete her, uh, special, like, status. Um, but she can reach, she can recharge them on break and also if you take too long. So, what ended up happening with a lot of people was they actually use a curse team. Or, or poison team like dot team basically so so they did a dot team and then they tried to break her bars and then at the same time stack enough dots so even after she gets her stacks back and you can't touch her anymore she still dies to the to the dot damage hmm. so yeah that 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 is a legit like composition i've seen like the poison video got a lot of views uh from benny um i'm very glad to see him get views again because like usually his runs are like it takes him like 20 years to set up it's his like yeah, all dude, of his run is like yeah yeah that uh that uh that okudo uh yeah, yeah, all attack reduction game. yeah it was like hundreds of applications per attack like, yeah the game was the game, almost crashing because yeah, he was doing it that shit was it could nuts, not handle dude. it yeah like, he, he spends like hours he also does gina ko solos as well as Leonidas solos. His most, like, in my opinion, his most, like, iconic solo units uh, are is Leonidas and Gina. Which is... Alright, guys. You ready Ready to see what my idea for my costume, for my my winter costume will be? My Christmas-related one? Drumroll. This is what it is. <laughs> What? <laughs> what? It's, what? It, it's a. It's not a bomb. No, it's a. It's a, one of those Christmas ornaments, like the the ball. What it is? Ones it's that good. you put on the. That you put on a tree. So my That's idea it. is, I'm just. Oh, you have. Oh, you gotta make it the shell. Yeah. That's cute. I like. I like. I thought you were just gonna put it. I thought that yeah, I thought just, this is period. Yeah, th this is this is it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I can just take Honestly, that. if I had verses, I feel like Draco might be able to do this. Damn dude. If only you had verses. If only I had MLB verses. Damn, if only so I had expensive. MLB verses. Man, I don't even have one verse, but I don't, I don't think one verse actually helps with this stuff. Versus, versus would have allowed me to do... Actually, no, if I had a non-MLB versus, I think I would have been able to frontline only Koi and Dark. Man. I am never the Koi and Dark guy. Damn. There's this one guy on Twitter who just does the run faster than me every time. The only time I I outsped I outsped them was when I fought against um, Super Recollection Quest Beast of Taming. I think I was faster than them. I think I might have been the first guy to min turn it. Maybe. Did you think? Because you think maybe he knows about you and like part of the reason why he's always faster than you is because he's desperately trying to be faster than you. And, uh, 
Oh, like no. ever oh. since that one time you beat him, he's he's never forgiven you for it or himself. Yeah. Maybe. Is I mean, it's it's like speedrun. Like speedrun can get really toxic sometimes. I think I lost to him with uh, against uh, the Noknaria challenge quest as well. Um, Photoshop certificate. Know. I'm just, you need a but I don't have fashion. everything. I don't have everything prepped for Koyan. So like, for if, if you want to be like a super like complete Mintern guy to like always, always be able to do a Mintern with your main uh, DPS. You have to have everything prepped. You have to have like MP5 Van Gogh. I think he has a level one MP5 Van Gogh. That that means he has he had to pull for ten. Yikes, certification. Like, uh, I don't know if I ever got certified for it, but I I did do it. I technically did it professionally. I I worked for a uh, a small news studio, and I was this. Uh, uh, I did graphics for them but that was that was more so just like uh over the shoulder uh graphics like 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 if uh if some team won i, I would have to make a graphic with the with their logo on it and put it and that's what we would have display behind the sports guy and it's uh it's not really why does pocket chuck have this on her Friends list. What? L MP5 level one Lancer Kyohi. It's been there for like years. Who? It's not years, but like Wait, what? Truck. Why does she? I I need to see a picture of this. I have her on my friends list. She has a. Send me a Lancer screenshot of it. It sounds very. Oh, I... in that sounds more interesting than what I'm doing right now. <laughs> But am, I, am, am I gonna expose her friends list right now? I don't think I should do it on stream. Doesn't matter. I mean, level. Oh is no, it's it... on event. It's not even. Yeah. Is it not already exposed? It is because she streams. I'm stupid. Yeah. I think she. Okay. Oh wow, that's cool. Can can I can I? Oh, I, I think I can share a screen. You can just send a picture of it. Like that'd probably be oh. easier. It's like a just take out the snipping tool, snip, and then drop it in there. I can't. I can't see it though. Uh, it's already. Yo, where is it? Where is it? I swear I saw it uh, earlier. You, I think you, you passed crazy? it. You crazy? Oh, it's in Lance. Oh yeah, here it is. Level one. Uh... Oh god, that is cringe. What banner did she roll on? I mean, Was no, she on oh, a... it's for. It's for. It's for the, uh, it's for burn. burn. It's for burn stacking. Wow, that's a. Uh... It's kind of, it's kind of hard for Keo to burn stack though at lo low level, but. It, it kind of just depends on the setup. Cause I did do a, a video like that, uh, like burning the dragon. That was a fun video Ooh, to do. Let's be real. Who's ever gonna use her as main DPS? It's so bad. Like, yeah, uh, uh, other than her own, her fan. Probably, uh, her I've own got, DPS. I know a guy on my friends list on JP that has like two Omega Kios. Not to be confused with Kaga Kio. Oh, there, there's a lot of. 120 Tyras. I'm not. I got 120. Oh my god! Tyra. I go to my friends list. I go to the Berserker tab, sort by level, and I start scrolling down. And it's like I have to scroll past like five Morgans. Yeah, oh my go. god! Look, look she's everywhere. Yeah, it's it's all Morgans. It's Morgan, Morgan, Morgan. Arjuna. Oh, Raiko. Raiko. There's a Raiko here. That's nice. that's a that's a rare breed. Uh, Morgan, Arjuna Altar, Morgan, Arjuna Altar. And then I switched to Lancer Morgan. and it's all melee scene. And then it's you. Uh, oh, this, there we go. Uh, and then Morgan. Kintoki, a good one. Morgan, Morgan. Summer Nobu. 
Oh, Summer Say, yeah, that's Pocket Chalk. Kiyohime was on is on the list. Um, for Assassin, it's all comma. It's actually all comma. I mean, oh, there's a Kojiro. Here's, here's the guy I was talking about. Uh, I don't know why he gave her this craft essence. I guess he just knew that no one was going to pick her anyways. But yeah, she's completely maxed out. And so is this one, which is probably more useful. Uh, yeah, completely maxed out. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Yep, Wait, and they've Rio's got their cards Lico? maxed out, too. Is what? Rio's Tonaliko not on here? Uh, it, it doesn't show all of the, the servants oh. on the list. It, it only shows, like, one row of them. Man, I gotta, yeah, I gotta could... add Rio. How the fuck have I not added Rio? Yeah. He has my... a 120 Tonaliko. Bro, look at this uh, guy. There is... 120 Benkei here. I have a 120 Charlotte. Kind of rare. Dude, he even has the anti-curse craft essence maxed out. <laughs> the Act one that we got. Actual base. That's that's so funny. When is Actually it makes solo? him do more damage. <laughs> oh, Achilles. Ooh, Taikobo. Okay, riders are more diverse. It's you. Me. It's... Yeah, you with uh, Ryder Morsaki. There's uh, hey. Ryder Mordred from Pocket Chalk. There's two Achilles, one Taikobo, one Mandricardo, and Ushi. Also, Ketz. Wow, pretty diverse. I got on someone Ryder. on my friends list. Uh, I think he. I'm not sure if he is in chat very often anymore, but uh, he. He also has a 120 Rider Murasaki. Oh, Habertraw, oh, yeah. Habertraw is a. This guy beat me twice <laughs> now. Uh, I friended. You know why I friended this guy? What? Is it this? A Saber? Oh, is Shiba? I thought it was just Saber Suzuka, bruh. Nah, nah. He 120 to Rider Suzuka. But the reason he's able to do that is because he didn't. Spin coins on a first on her uh, second oh. append, but I did because he literally has all the that. furries. Well, I mean, not furries, but like you know, I, yeah. I feel like this is a guy that would hotly contest that. It, it's it's all of the all of the you know, Tamamos, whatnot. Ah, uh, yes, my favorite uh, furry character, Muramasa. Muramasa. Well, yeah, it's all Melusine on Lancer, there's one Karna at least. Ironically, Rios doesn't show up as Melusine. Shows up as Melt. Yeah. Actually, one of the rare, rare ones. It's all Gills and Archer. Takasugi. Takasugi. Nobukatsu. He's so close. He's one ten. And he's got, he's got these goober ass glasses. Nobukatsu. Oh no. And it's just all Gil. Fucking Gil. Who cares about? Oh, Char- what's the- wow, this is all a Charlie. Oh, you know- you know what? Um, I forgot the- the waifu census. That ended a couple days ago, and- You- you remember oh, yeah, that, right? I remember. Yeah, yeah, because right, yeah. you, like, copied and pasted his entire message in your- uh, Yeah, I your remember server, that. Including the part where he was, like, trying to say something that wasn't supposed to be copied and pasted. Oh, <laughs> uh, look. Look. Yeah. Oh, okay. But Saber Mave. 120 oh, wait. Saber Mave. Never mind. I know. This is just a Mave account. And and the guy quit. He's like a Mintern guy. And he like passed on his account to uh, one of my members. Damn. Waifu census. Yeah, Klidge did like this big survey thing that a, a ton of people... Uh, uh, went and voted in uh, for like their favorite characters by class and gender. Uh, so uh, I don't have access to the the document, so I just have to uh, list some of them. 
Uh, I was actually kind of shocked um, because I thought I was going to be like one of the only people that picked Sheba. There was apparently like at least, I think there was like 50 people who voted for Ooh, which wow. is shocking. Nice. Uh, let me pull up that VOD. Well, he even um, honored the, because I'm pretty sure he quit before this summer. But he even honored uh, his uh, legacy, I guess. And then 120, Nakanaria. It's a, it's a nice one. Damn. That's sad. It's always sad to see people quit. Um, oh, you have Murasaki. Of oh, of course. We got Babbage-san with Babbage. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Is it... I use him a lot because he has... Um... He has Ox King on his level 70 coin light. Not Klidge, it's just some it's a it's a Mintern guy on Twitter. Uh he he's like he's I, I think his Twitter handle is can I even say that on stream? I don't know. Okay. His his his, his Twitter handle is super Celtic B word. Oh. <laughs> That's a... Uh... That, that's a that's an interesting name. That sounds like a Mave fan. Oh, so yeah, it it is a Mave account. Okay. Well, I even missed Grail though, Suzu. That's interesting. Oh, dude. Dude, maybe I can. Maybe I can uh, get on the Mists friend list. That'd be. I mean, his JP is not as stacked as NA, though. His JP is just yeah, fine. Yeah, but it's, you see, it's not about me borrowing from him. It's it's him seeing my servants. That's what really matters here. Oh, I forgot he got, he had MP5 Draco. Oh, he has... Does he... he... Where... I, I see, like... Oh, okay, there's one Grail. It's, uh, yeah, that's the Grail list. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Oh, he grilled, um... He grilled, I remember, he grilled Koi and Light. And then when we were doing um, the whole Pran, I don't know if you know that, the, the whole. Um, yeah, the, the big collab thing. That yeah, the big did. collab. We, we had like a quiz, and then we were joking around where, you know, he was the Koi and Light guy, and I was the Koi and Dark guy, and I wasn't having it, so I won 20 in mine. Oh, damn, dude. That's one way it. to show him. I'm not having it. I ain't having that. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> what do you mean? What do you mean? What the fuck you mean, dude. Look at this. I paid for this. Uh, I I, did, did I pay a lot for this? I don't think I actually. No, I lied. Yes. I paid a lot for this. Yes. Uh, if it's I if it's if you had to wail on FGO, you had to pay a lot for it. It's really easy to forget how much money you have to spend to do shit in this game. <laughs> The first Koi and Light took me 1.2k. 1.2k. SQ. Okay. I was about to say that. Is, is it SQ? Not dollar. SQ. SQ. And then the second one was 400 more. Damn. And then the third one was easier. The third one was probably like, like the 200. There's no pity for light. There's no pity for light. What do you mean pity? If she didn't, there was no pity when she came see, out. You fool. See, Fate Grand Order is free to play friendly, but it is not whale friendly. That that's the problem. That's actually true. That is actually it's, true. There are games where you can just whale and get a bunch of like it's yeah. It, you don't. There's there's a lot of games that are meaner to their non-paying players than their paying players, but that's. That's not how it is here. <laughs> that is actually so accurate. F FGO is very, like, not friendly to whales. Like, if, if FGO was friendly to whales, USOs would have been able to exchange for, like, one SSR per USO. Yeah, dude. Like, no, it's 10. <laughs> what even is the purpose of a, of a USO? I have 14. <laughs> yeah, if you have NP15 of one servant, you can get one for free. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like Koyan Light, I don't remember. I think I also rolled for her. Um, I, I rolled for three more copies of her when she came back. 
No, I rolled for two more copies of her when she came back because I got one from GSSR. So I rolled for two more copies of her when she came back. I think it. I think that took nine hundred for two more. So like total Koyan Light. Oh shit, Koyan Light in total might have taken most of my SQ. She might have been the most expensive. How much is that? 800, 2,000, 2,000. Okay, no, she's definitely not the most expensive. No, it's like it's like 2,600. It's cheaper than Durga. It's not. It's nothing. <laughs> cheaper than Durga. Bro, um, uh, I'm looking at the the results of the census. Um, Ibuki scored above Nero Claudius, so original Nero. So probably. Not actually above Nero because there's another Saber uh, Nero there. And above Salter. Right, who were two of what I thought were the, the most popular uh, Saber females. Of course, uh, I bet I know who won the Beast category. Uh, there wasn't a Beast category. There was actually. A, oh, come on. Yeah, they had like two separate. Extra classes. Oh, extra one, extra two. Oh, it's just like class score actually. Yeah, class score had extra one. Extra yeah, two. yeah. If if you only, if you don't look at how it, it's structured, it looks like Oberon was the most popular servant by far, but because he had like over uh, how many was it? Uh, I don't. It was 1,258 votes for Oberon. Jesus. But the reason Isn't why... Isn't there only total 2,000 votes? Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, he had He's... he was competing with three uh, other servants. So it was Taisui, uh, Rasputin, uh, oh, Rasputin, Domon, actually. and Voyager. Dolman. And also Dolman option did. six. For some reason, he left a blank option in there. <laughs> And one person voted for it. I don't like I don't like extra classes. Nah, dude. My, I don't, my favorite. I don't like extra. my favorite servant is option six. Yeah, Musashi. Yeah, male Musashi. Male Musashi. He, he won over yeah, he beat, I mean, I don't know why yes. you're surprised. It's Oberon. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, it's all. Just... Yeah, it's Kirei, but it's Oberon. Like, just like judging from the hype this year, I, I I didn't really see much hype out of Kirei. Because he's not broken. Yeah. And Oberon is haha. He shows up everywhere. I'm actually pretty tired of his voice because he shows up in every team for farming, especially for raids. Wait, you but listen like... to your game while you're farming? Yeah. Oh, would you do that? I turned the music why off. Just, though. Why not just sit there and focus on, uh, like whatever podcast or what or whatever the fuck you're listening to? True, like this one. Okay, I don't know. yeah. Okay. Nice self promo. So, I guess who the number one female saber was? Wasn't he Buki? He said he Buki. No, no, she scored higher than a lot of them. She was okay. Let me think. Okay, I actually did not see the list, but let me guess. Musashi. That's to be Musashi. Right? Musashi was second. No way. Who? F Saber. Remember this Artori. is this is NA, and remember where we are on NA. Like, uh, most of the people who replied were NA people. Where are we in NA? The last thing we had was Lost Built 6. What, Bar Guest? Yeah. I... Yeah. What, uh, what? Yeah. Yeah, she's... Uh, I don't think that number is going to stay the same. I think that uh, over time it might... I don't know. There's Bar just... Bro! There's... Recount! There's no way it's Bar Guest. Well, I don't. Hate I would Bargas, say but... that female sabers are like one of the most uh, hard-fought classes. Uh, it doesn't yeah. help that several uh, several of those characters have multiple characters in there, and that can kind of dilute it. Uh, 
Uh, now, well, male yeah, most saber. People... Male saber, Mormasa. Uh, There's no way it's not Mormasa. Hold on. If it's not Mormasa. Probably Mormasa, I can't remember. I'm going to eat yeah, my it hat. Is. It's 438. Bedivere was second. Ooh. Uh, what else? Uh, Archer. It's female. Oh, archer. I know the Archer one. I actually know male Archer because somebody spoiled it. Female oh, yeah. Archer, I don't know though. All right. Female so... Archer. Um. Ishtar. Ishtar is not number one. Wow. I, I think you're actually going to be surprised by number one. Fujino. Uh, no. Uh, third oh. place is Nobu. Second place is Ishtar. And first place is Bavon C. Oh, of course. Lost Boss. Oh, yeah, of course. It's Smobcast. It's, yeah, dude. She, she's, on, she's on the wall. Yeah, dude. There you go. I, I forgot. We had, I forgot we had that subliminal effect on them. Uh, <laughs> kind of a smob cast. Dude, there were nine people. Uh, there were eight other people who voted for Tota. Uh, David was the lowest on uh, Archer males, but I don't um, know why she doesn't feel like an Archer to me. Like she doesn't pop into my mind when I think Archer. Yeah, because she's been pretending to not be one. I, I haven't used her pretender a lot after basically milking every. Like old boss, I am not used to. I tried to use her in this boss, it just didn't work out that well. No. Okay, so what was it you heard was number one for male archer? Emia. Yeah, uh, it was Emia, and then after that was Gilgamesh, and Super Orion was yeah. number three. I think it's surprising. Oh, Super Orion, damn. What about, okay. Dude, uh, Rider? I... Uh, let's let's go through by class and stuff, so I don't have to keep jumping back and forth. Oh, Lancer, Lancer, I'm stupid. Yeah, um, Melusine. Uh, hold on. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. No. Okay. I was gonna say there's no way it's bar guest. There's no way it's bar guest, Bavanshi, and not Melusine. Melusine's literally the most po uh, popular of the the three. There's no way it's not Mel. It has to be Melusine. It's Melusine, right? Well, more me's will never fail you. It's it has to be Melusine. Well, number three is Skaha. Okay. Number two is Melusine. <laughs> no fucking way. No fucking way. It's not Melusine. You, you know what? Who, you know who number one is like. No. It's Irish. Oh, oh, oh okay. Oh, well, okay, okay. Never mind. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that that does make. Yeah, that's funny. She she's not the strongest of the of the of the fairy knights. I can't believe it's not Liz. Okay, I I, I can definitely believe it's not Liz. I'm... What the fuck? Don Quixote has seventy five favorites. What? <laughs> He's funny. People like funny people. Yeah, yeah, but there's there's other funny people that didn't get any votes. Not funny enough. I like Romulus. <laughs> well, no, no, wait, Benke, Benke or... got two responses. All right, like he's a funny character, isn't he? Uh, yeah, he's, yeah. I guess, I guess he's pretty funny. Okay, so male Lancer might be a bit more, a bit obvious. No, Ku. Yeah, Ku. Uh, okay. Number two is Inkiru, and number three is Canis. Canis counts as male. Wow. Cheating. She she cheat Did she cheat though? Like she wasn't Ooh. she wasn't in she wasn't was competing she in, in both. Like oh. she was not competing in both? She was competing with males. I actually I guess oh. I guess she does get an edge for waifu bias, I guess. Yeah. Is yeah. 
Kane Kane is is that tr trans uh, athlete that goes that joins oh. the other league. Oh, oh god. <laughs> okay, so right or female? Right or female? Carmen. Okay, no. Uh, Who's a writer? I'm a writer. Why are there so? Not Liz. There's no way it's Liz. Who's a writer? Rainus? No. Rainus is pretty good. No. Who's a writer? I have to actually look at who's a writer. Um, da Vinci. Da Vinci is not one of the top three. Wow, okay. It, then. It, oh, Haybatron. Hey because Lost Boy was six. Uh, she is not even in the top five. No way! Really? Who's who's a top writer? Who's even a writer? Carmilla? No. How many votes did she get, actually? I didn't vote, by the way. Oh, wait. Man, this is why she lost, dude. People like you aren't voting. Did she get zero votes? Did she actually get zero votes? Carmilla? Yeah. Uh, let me... You probably got zero votes. There's just a lot of popular. Uh, uh no, she got 54. That's wow. Uh, she tied wow. with Monica. That is surprising. Ryder Carmilla tied but with Bodica. If, if it says anything, she got less than Bakken. <laughs> less than Bakken. Oh yeah, Ushi. True. Yeah, it's, it's Ushi. It has it's to Ushi. Be. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's kind of I, funny. Like the the top three are all Babylonia people, uh, although um, Medusa like is, is in top three. three. Really? Yeah. Yeah, she's number three. Uh, I, Who's second though? Uh, second was Medusa. I think. Oh. I think this one was just like a really well-rounded category. So, because like the the top three. There's only 43 uh, votes difference between top two. Uh, and usually, like, it's a lot... Like, you'll have outliers mm -hmm. uh, that are a lot more popular than others, but uh, I guess this class just has a lot of medium hitters, if you will. Mm -hmm. All right, so male writers. Uh... I'm gonna actually be okay. No, I'm not gonna be a weirdo. It's Ozzy. Ozzy is number three. Chat, stop giving hints. Achilles? Nope. But he was in the story. Then. Yes, Mandricardo. Oh, okay. Well, he I, beat, I didn't know he was that popular. Yeah, he beat Astolfo by three votes. <laughs> oh, yeah, Astolfo's a writer. I keep thinking he's a fucking saber. I mean, he is a saber. Takeda Shingen? Yeah. How many votes did Takeda Shingen get? Probably like I, two. I think he actually got a decent amount just because of recency. Uh, People actually do kind of like him. Uh, it's just... Uh, people making meta analysis weren't because yeah he got forty five responses which is two more than Ivan. Oh, <laughs> that's that's at least better. Ivan. Don't be sad. At least you're better in gameplay. <laughs> Bro. Uh. All right, female caster. This is Castoria. Obvious. Yeah, yeah, Castoria. Okay, what is the second one for? The that scotty no oh she's not in the top three let me cheat it's tona lico what's no that is not number two <laughs> yeah tona lico is number three so castoria did get two of the top three positions tona lico is technically morgan who's who's a who's a cast I almost said proto Merlin, not a bro. 
Who's a caster? Who who's a who's a woman caster? Woman. It, re it really isn't Scotty. Damn, y'all really hate quick. Holy shit. Um. Unicris is number four. Scotty is number five. Damn, y'all really hate quick. Holy shit. Miss actually... Crane. No way. No. 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 Not even close. Oh, Tamamo. Yeah, dude. Of Tomomo. course. It's Tamamo. How did I forget? She had yep. like barely over half of what Castoria had, but yeah, <laughs> it was Tamamo. No, she she certainly is taking a bigger win here than uh, <laughs> gameplay. And in terms of what is it with you and gameplay? Why do you keep bringing up gameplay here, Doug? Nita Chris was number five or number four. Uh, ca caster male Merlin final answer because I literally don't see anyone else on my friends list. Uh, yep, it right. was Merlin. Um, yeah, yeah this I, I don't. Yeah, I don't think who there's much competition a... in this one because who Merlin else is a man caster? Who else even is a man cast? Waver. I mean, yeah, Waver. Yeah, Waver was number three. <laughs> um. Yeah, and then the second place was Gilgamesh. That's cheating! Come on, okay. I mean, uh, Artoria gets I, to I be in I... all of the classes, so, like, come on. True. Gilgamesh got two number twos. Wow, he must be real fucking pissed. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, like one of one of his alts had no chance of ever winning in hell. Uh, not because uh, what, Kid all Gil? Gil. It's not because all Gil fans hate Kid Gil. It's because he's competing with Gil. <laughs> so Gil fans are just gonna pick Gil. That's why he got nine votes. Uh, oh, bruh, nine. That's that is that's yeah, actually. Why vote for a fake when you can vote for the original? I, I, I never watched that anime. I, I don't know how. I don't know how the quote goes. Assassin, assassin, female, comma. Has to be comma. There's always comma. Comma every day. Uh... Right. I'm literally going oh. going with how many 120s I have on my friend. It's not comma. Hold on. I actually accidentally clicked past it. Uh, yeah, number one yeah, I... is comma. There uh, you go. Any guesses on number two and three? Koyan Light. Koyan Light is number two. Hey, hey, not in the stream here, sir. You good? Who even is an assassin? Well, Semi Ramus? Nah. Oh, Shuten. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, she is very popular. Yep. Carmilla? Carmilla probably got like three votes. Where did Carmilla place? Uh, she got. M Matahari probably got more votes than she did. Uh. Matahari got 30 votes. Dude, there's two us there's the only one assassin male that exists, it's King Asan. He's the first Asan. There's literally on only one fucking male assassin that exists. It's oh yeah, Izo. Yeah, Izo people like that little twink. Like <laughs> King Asan, <laughs> Izo, and um <laughs> I've never heard some call a twink before. <laughs> Um, I don't know who... <laughs> I, I can't think of a third one. Nobody likes Emiya, bro. He's ripped? Yeah, but he acts like a little... He's... he's short, I guess. Cause the fucking snake woman keeps bullying him. Like, is she, she, she's, she's always like, towering over him as like, Yo, you wanna eat a frog or something? You fucking weirdo. <laughs> Carmilla got 61 votes, so... She wow, died. okay, I severely underestimated the power of Carmilla. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that happens a lot. What's the third, um, assassin male? 
Do they even um, exist? Oh, Kojiro. Wait, right? Yes. Um, Kojiro, I think, is like number four. Uh, Dang. Number one is First to Son. Uh, fitting. Uh, number two is Izo. Number three is Tez. I guess oh, it's of he's course. Recent. Oh. How, how did I forget? I also forgot he was assassin. Um. Mm. All right, so Berserker female. Ibuki. <laughs> oh no, Morgan! Morgan! What a stupid question! What a stupid question! Of course, it's Morgan. It is when it was Morgan, indeed. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, uh, you know who number two is. Ibuki. Nah. Musashi. Yeah. You know okay. who number three is, though. If it's Castor, I'm gonna kill someone. It, it is Castor. Please don't kill me. <laughs> yeah, dude. Still real, I'm dude. Castoria got first on Caster, and Morgan Caster got third on Caster, and then Morgan Berserker gets first on Berserker, and Castoria Berserker gets. Y'all are just trading wins, bro. Stop it. Yeah, dude. Uh, extra. What does extra one have? Ruler. Ruler Avenger. Alter Ego. Oh yeah. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Uh, Nightingale actually got fourth place, which was kind of surprising to me. Uh, she oh, wow. she beat Raiko. <laughs> Damn. And uh, and Jerker, and uh, and Creamhild. I mean, it, in terms of Dojin numbers. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was that's what I was actually thinking. It was like, yeah, she's definitely being carried by Dojins. In terms like, of Dojin numbers, dude, she was she was competing with Raiko, but then like, she kind of pulled it head. Dude, the first time I watched a Klidge stream, he shared a nuke code for one of her Dojins. It was like, yeah, I, I think this is that kind of community. It's, it's too easy. It's just like you know, it's too easy. It's like, you know, coming for a normal checkup and she pulls down your pants. Like, it literally happens in real yeah, life. It's... But, you know, it just doesn't... It's, what penis, inspection. it's pen yeah. penis inspection day. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 she's just checking if you have hernia. It's important. Hernia? Yeah. It, it It's when your intestine falls into your ball sack. Oh, I... I, I didn't know that. Okay. Part of a hernia, but uh, okay. All, all right. I, I mean, you're the is one with the medical degree here, so like, I'm. Maybe, maybe, this, okay, I'm maybe, maybe it's not ears. called a hernia. I think it's called a hernia. I'm pretty sure it's called. A hernia. Isn't it a hernia like when the the muscle gets shifted out of place, and like something, uh, like something managed, like an organ gets to, uh move into a place where the muscle doesn't let it normally I think mm. uh, so male berserker I thought you were gonna look up male hernia <laughs> <laughs> no no dude I, I, I don't want to hear male about testicle balls Arjuna <laughs> alter yeah uh, second place is Kentucky and third place is Herc a, oh, Kualter yeah. died. Let's go. Yeah, rip. Um, yeah, it's harder to harder to say with these. Uh, is this is. Uh, this is ruler. Oh, it's ruler, Avenger, Moon Cancer, and uh, uh I think that's it. Yeah, there's only three extra ones for some reason. Um. Uh oh, this is hard. For female, it's not gonna be any of the rulers. Oh yeah, also shielder. Oh shit! I don't think Mash is gonna win. I think the commu I think the community hates Mash. I'm sorry. I don't think Mash is winning. Um. So it's not gonna be any of the rulers. It's gonna be one of the Avengers. It's gonna be no. It could be BB. Fuck. No. 
nobody likes BB anymore. BB so last year. Uh, Damn. It's uh, it's it it's uh, it's summer comma. Summer comma was uh, like I think number seven. Damn, not even close. Wow, summer comma fell off. There's there's some really hard hitters here. This is a what Mao Nobu? Yeah, Mao Nobu was number one. Mash was number two. Wow. Um, oh, okay. People I'm select surprised Mash. you didn't guess what number three was. Like the what the Jolter. person who is. Yeah, it's Jolter. Yeah. Wow. So. Uh, summer BB uh, BB fell off, dude. If this was like two years ago, uh, Spishtar definitely would have win. No, no, nobody dude. Cares about Jolter cares fell about off. Jolter was like one of the most popular characters. Yeah, because she they keep refusing to update her animation. She still looks like a goober. <laughs> All right, so the same group, but with males. So, uh, uh, so Avenger, Ruler, Moon Cancer, males. I, is there even a male Moon Cancer? Down. There's no male Moon Cancer. Man. Yeah, yeah, it's Dante's. Uh, yeah. He he has 810 responses because there's only like seven people competing in there. And then after that is Sherlock, then Salieri. Oh, Salieri. I expected Sherlock Holmes. I didn't expect Salieri. All right. Well, I should expect Salieri, to be honest. And then we've got the last of them, which is, uh, which is Pretender, Alter Ego, Foreigner, and I think Beast as well. I don't think Draco's winning this, despite Draco being pretty popular. Yeah, uh, one Gina got two votes. <laughs> oh, I mean, female Kukul Khan. Um, right? Let me, let me scrub forward a little. Uh, there's a lot of strong alter egos, though. There's actually quite a few servants in this group. They're popular. Mm -hmm. Uh, oh, jeez. Cool, cool Khan. It's possible that Cool, cool Khan didn't win. Uh, uh, Cuckoo is actually number five. Wow. Uh, Draco did score more than she did by eight. Wow. Number three. But we still Amazing. Don't have number one. Female. Melt Rillis. That's a classic bing, bing. though. Really? Yep. She didn't fall off like Jolter? Yeah, I, I was not. expecting her to fall off like Jolter. Yeah, um, and then the last uh last but not least, the the second place was Van Gogh. Van Gogh. And apparently, people didn't forget her after one year. So. Well. Van Gogh. Wow. This all community right. surprised me once again. Oh, okay. Yeah, we already went over the last one. That was Oberon. That's Oberon. So yeah, Oberon. Oberon with 1,258 votes. I already forgot the second one. Uh, yeah, it was Voyager, then Great. Domon. Uh, then Kira. Oh, Dolman. Yeah, like this is some rough competitors, and then also Oberon, which is uh, competing rougher than any of them. Um, I gotta be right back. Uh, I gotta go to the bathroom. I mean, it's almost nine. I think we can probably. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. We we should probably just wrap it up with uh, for yeah. the night. Uh, yeah. So. Wow. Thank you everyone for sitting here and listening to us talk a little bit about team building, then go off and talk about fucking popular Bernies? characters. I don't know. You. Yeah, I'm not the one My that bad. I'm not the one that brought it up, sir. Um, but okay. We have I I've had this idea. So So we gotta do something special for Christmas. Yeah. And how do you like the idea of doing 
uh, a collab as far as like gaming goes for for a special for Christmas. What does that mean? Well, well, you see, there's this little game that I saw that looked like a little bit of fun. Uh, that uh, I saw some people were playing called Lethal Company. I don't know if I if my computer can run it. Oh fuck, man. God. I'm sorry. Yeah. Dude, dude, you need to upgrade your, your shit, dude. I know, I know. At yeah, least... Lethal Company looks really fun. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, because, like, I, I, I'd imagine we could probably talk Rio into it. Uh, yeah. But it, like, can you no, it's Google because it? I'm running a <laughs> garbage <laughs> Apple Mac. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's not because the computer can't actually run it, it's because it's Mac. Oh. Uh, I'll 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 try to see if there's a there's a workaround. Okay. Uh, otherwise, we could we could probably just figure out some other game. Um. But uh, I, I would Pokemon? assume. No. Saturday might work for that. I, I don't know. Uh, we'd have to talk about that outside of this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Don't want to put you too much on the spot. I'm already kind of uh, spitballing a little late. It's fine. But yeah, um, thank you all so much for being here and participating and watching us do stuff. I, I literally just talked through the outro. Uh, bye bye, everyone. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>